All right, I couldn't resist. I just had to let the music play. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is Chris Pope, and uh, this is the Space Quest Three commentary with Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, and some awesome music playing in the background there. Hope the chat room can hear me. Please let me know if you can. Hey, everybody. And that's Mark. Mark, hey, how's it going? Pope. And there's Scott. I'm hoping that my Twitch TV thing comes on, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to. <laughs> yes, if you guys can hear but can't see anything, you might want to try uh, refreshing oh, okay. your browser. Now we're working. Hey, gang, how are we coming through? All right, excellent. Well, guys, uh, before we get started, a couple of quick things to say. Um, so we've done the last couple of these things, and um, it's uh, worked pretty smoothly, although the rendering with Justin TV, for whatever reason, has had problems. Uh, we've noticed that when we capture the, uh, the audio, uh, or we capture the video from the site itself, the audio is there, it's having buffering problems. I've adjusted my buffering a little bit to help, but I am recording all the audio separately to make sure that we have a nice, clear copy of it. Um, and so please keep in mind, I actually uh, have both of the videos rendered uh, with the higher quality audio, and uh, that will be posted out there for everybody to, to check out. Uh, right now I'm just cutting the, cutting the file down a little bit um, from like a 5 gig file to a, a smaller file, and we'll post it out there. For everybody, I know somebody had posted one yesterday, and I appreciate that. The only thing was was that um, the audio was still a little messed up in the YouTube channel where it was posted. So, anyway, without further ado, that's the deal there, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get the ball rolling. So here we go. Oh, got to also say, woohoo! We we reached the three hundred thousand dollar mark today, and. Um, We've got Yay. the the next phase Yay. of living sketch playable. What what are we calling it? Uh, prototype three. Live concept art. Yes, thank you. Number three is uh is pretty much done and will be posted out there here a bit later for you guys. Um, just finishing a couple things up on uh, on how that will be played for you guys, or I should say, you guys will play it. <laughs> so, yes. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We're really excited. Uh, I know this is um, everybody, a lot of people's favorite uh, Space Quest. Um, it's definitely one of my favorites. So really excited. This is definitely the Space Quest that had the, the, the first really epic music. No offense, Mark, to your, to your PC <laughs> speaker music you made. <laughs> no, it was, it's, I, I agree 100%. It was a technological stride, but Mark set the uh, standard, and, and it was carried on thanks to Bob. There you go. That's exactly right. So, actually, my first I'll, I'll go ahead and ask a question about that. This question was one that uh, that was written from, um, I think, I, yeah, I apologize if I mispronounced his name, Alistair Gillett. It, and his question was sent in by email. My question is about the music. Did, did you guys enjoy working with the Super Tramp? drummer Bob Siebenberg and uh, do you have any cool anecdotes? Do they have any fond memories of uh, music with them? Um, and all that. So, there you go. Scott, I know you were a fan of him uh, before. He oh yeah, I had, I had, uh, I had been, I'd, I'd gone to a uh, Super Tramp concert. Uh, Bob told me that oddly enough, we were located about 40 miles north of Fresno and yeah, at Oak, Sierra Oakhurst was, and uh, for some reason, Super Tramp toured the whole world. But Bob told me that their two biggest cities were um, Michigan, were uh, was was uh, were uh, Milwaukee and Fresno. For some reason, they have no idea why. But every time they came to Fresno, unlike so many other bands, they always had to add at least one more date. And Fresno was no big place, you know. It was you know it was a relatively just average sized town, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but anyway, Bob was just really cool, and he told me stories about things about how they, they ended up, you know, they didn't, they never knew really where they were, what the date was when they were traveling in Europe and stuff, and their hair grew. And Bob had little, had visa issues, and so if you look at uh, some of the albums and stuff, you'll see that Bob has more than one spelling of his last name, because that's how he got around some of his visa problems. <laughs> that's an interesting fun fact for you. One way to do it. And yeah, it's odd. I, I think maybe Fresno, maybe it was proximity to L.A., and Everything maybe they got business 
they drew drew people from all over the state. So, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of a lot of acts would come to Fresno to uh, to tune up before they hit San Francisco and L.A. And uh, but but there was just this big following in uh, in Fresno for some reason. And Bob had a real philosophical view on it, given the given the nature of the of the country at that point in time. It was it was really tough. It was post Watergate. It was uh, post uh, OPEC. I mean, it was it was it was when OPEC was coming out. This, the United States was in a funk, and and uh, and uh, and uh, and George Clinton wasn't quite you know getting enough of the of the good funk out there. And uh, but so he said, Super Cramps music was you know more happy for the most part until Breakfast from Amer- uh, in America came out. And uh, hmm. that's and, an interesting uh, so, take on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, he had real interest. He was real philosophical about it, you know. And, they, and, and he was a man. One of the things I got to say about Bob was there was, you, you know, it was intimidating to think we were going to be working with this guy who was a star, of one of the biggest bands that, you know, at least, you know, when when we met, when we got to work with them, they they were definitely tailing off, but uh, uh, because of a split in the band. But uh, he, the guy was just like any other guy. He coached, he coached uh, little league and stuff like that. Just a really fine, uh, really nice person. And uh, and for you guys that are looking in the picture, Bob is actually the the one on the far left in this photo of Supertramp. There is Bob one other. Bob is the only. Thing. He was the only American in the group, right? Exactly. And the funny thing is that uh, Bob and his wife lived in L.A. and they wanted to get out of L.A. and so they moved to London specifically to get away from L.A. life. Mm-hmm. And all the other guys had, you know, were from the U.K. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not, I think one was Welsh, and I'm not sure. Maybe one of them was Scottish. I can't. I can't remember exactly. But they were sick and tired of the weather in, in the UK. So after the band met, met some success, they all wanted. They all moved back to LA, much to Bob's <laughs> chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember well, Bob telling me that there are a few golf clubs in the bottoms of ponds at various uh, prestigious LA golf courses. <laughs> <laughs> he was a calm guy until he golfed. <laughs> <laughs> then he needed anger management. <laughs> yeah, when he got on a golf course, that came. He got rid of all of his frustrations, and uh, I think he had enough money that he could afford a new pair of clubs every time, they, or a new set of clubs every time they went out. <laughs> I don't know if he shared shared with you, Scott, but I, I'm I, I'm guessing it was that love of L.A. that that made him move to Oakhurst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think once once the band uh, quit touring, they were, it was like, okay, this is my chance to get out. Yeah, because he had to stay LA. close to the this the center of the business. The Not that there's anything short. wrong with L.A. for anybody who might be from L.A. listening. I went to high <laughs> yeah, I went right. to high school there, so uh, I spent a lot of time down there sucking in orange air. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, that's cool, and I'm sure that was a. It was a neat experience for sure to get to work with, uh, you know, somebody that you, it's in a band that you listen to and, and all yeah. that. It's funny. I, I have to say, uh, for me, I, it was just kind of being in awe because it's like, well, this guy would ask us what we thought of his music and stuff. And it's like, well, who are we to tell him what we think? <laughs> it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, I was, while I was sitting there going, who am I to just sort of like, uh, who am I to tell Bob Siebenberg what to do with music? Mark was the first one to say, well, Bob, you know, if he could change this and that. And I was going, damn, Mark. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? Oh, man, that's ballsy. <laughs> yeah, but I think Bob, the only thing I recommended he change was he, he that he somehow bridged between the old music and the new and to somehow incorporate some of the original music at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of bridge the two, which he did beautifully. Yeah. Actually, I was grateful that Mark did. I just I didn't have the balls to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> At least yeah. not yet. And at that but, point, and it was I like, can't oh. remember Scott if you were there or not. But uh, one of the coolest memories I have of working with Bob is um, going out to the studio. Got to go out and see his um, little. Oh little, no! Like, I never did. Secret lair, which was in this barn, this very unassuming outbuilding at his um, his little. His his place there is a few acres, just down, Compound. not just just up the highway from, uh, not too far, maybe a couple of miles up from where the Sierra was located. Yeah, it's amazing how much stuff is hidden off of Highway Forty One, uh, off of uh, what is that, Four Twenty Six Road, Four Twenty Six in Oakers. There's a lot of there's a lot of things buried back in there that you just you just don't think there is uh, back there. There are all these nice little flat out areas, meadows that are just kind of nestled in, but but hidden by trees. Very cool, yeah. Well, that's you know that, that, again that had to be an experience. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody uh, 
ever expected to to, to have like a, a rock band, kind of a rock band hero all of a sudden come up and work with you out of nowhere. <laughs> so, really cool, really cool stuff. I well, I don't really under I don't remember Scott. Maybe you know. I'm sure Ken had something to do with that. How how we how um we got in contact with Bob initially. I think Bob actually sought Sierra out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, according um, to an interview, think, he did. Yeah, I believe I believe he was looking he was looking to to uh, to because Bob went to one of the things one of the reasons he went to London was to go to a to a uh, to a music school. I don't, I don't exactly remember what it was called, but to, he went there to further his his musical education, and then he decided he wanted to to uh, apply what he knew musically to this new uh, form of art uh, called the you know entertainment software. And uh, and I think that, that I think it was actually Bob reaching out to Ken that uh, made it happen. Hmm. Yeah. Really cool. Well, let's see. Um, I guess we'll start out with the traditional question then. At this point, um, so Space Quest Two ended. Um, you know, you guys clearly left it open to where there could be a third one. So you obviously knew that there was probably going to be a third one. Um, and what kind of gave you the ideas and, um, for the Pirates of Pestulon? You guys, were, uh, I know you were throwing things well, at the wall probably. And, yeah, a lot of stuff getting thrown at the wall, but mostly <laughs> at this point in time, I think we were just both incredibly desperate for new ideas, trying to come up with something original. And, uh, I can't remember if I fell and hit my head on the toilet or something or what, but <laughs> come up with this crazy idea to, you know, do a time travel kind of a thing, but instead of actually traveling through time, you're traveling through the sequels. And um, it was crazy enough, it was just crazy enough idea that uh, Scott and I just kind of latched onto that and ran with it. You're talking about, wait, or you're not talking about Space Quest 4, you're talking about Space Quest 3. You're right, I'm talking about Space Quest 4. Yeah, you travel. <laughs> <laughs> What's Space Quest Three about? Did you Scott? fall and hit your head on the uh, toilet Space this Quest morning? 3, yeah. Oh yeah, that game. <laughs> Sorry, gang, got ahead of myself there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It was we uh, the the whole thing about Space Quest Three was that uh, Roger, you know, we picked it up where Roger left off, drifting in space, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then the junk freighter pulling him in, and uh, and and it just it just it went from there. One of the things that we wanted to have Roger be was less landlocked, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, him getting. Him, him being able to find his way into the, him getting pulled in, uh, tractor beamed into the junk freighter, uh, and then the junk freighter shutting out, down just as Roger woke up from his stasis, uh, uh, that he'd gotten into at Space Quest, and the Space Quest 4 was perfect. He jumped down, and then there are all, there are all these junk ships in there, and that's where he learned, he discovers the aluminum mallard, which Mark appropriately named, and, uh, and then the Pirates of Pestilon, I'm not sure, I think Mark might have been in a Gil Gilbert, Gilbert and Sullivan phase of his life or something like that. Uh, <laughs> it kind of goes with Pirates of Penzance. And uh, I had to look that up, by the way. I don't know it by heart in case anybody thinks. Anyway, uh, <laughs> just a funny thing. Yeah, I've but, been drinking again. <laughs> yeah, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, that moonshine, you know, it's blowing all hours <laughs> of the day. And, uh, so yeah, we, it was fun because we, we could, uh, it marked so many cool things in there. You know, we had, we had the pod from space from, uh, from 2001, like we talked about yesterday. And, and then, uh, you know, and, uh, the, the lost in space ship, uh, we had, uh, what it was a TIE fighter mark. Was that the one that had, that originally had the empire sucks on, uh, written on it that Ken made yeah, us take out? Yeah. Graffitied on the side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, and you had the uh, transformer head and, uh, we threw something. anything and everything in there. That yeah, was great. The intergalactic had, junkie. Yeah. Yeah, had, yeah. Basically, that uh, that 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 uh, thing that you have to that tunnel you have to walk through is basically sort of like a Saturn V booster uh, from uh, the old Apollo program. And it's really yeah, we even put the Acme, the Wiley e. Coyote Acme rocket in there. Awesome. Yeah, uh -huh. there were so many cool things, and for some reason, Ken couldn't see the the humor. And uh, you know, in 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 the uh, Empire, the Empire sucks uh, spray painting on the Tie Fighter, you know. And, and if you and if you watch the movies, the Empire was the bad guys. So it's like it, it makes sense that a you know, one of the rebels, one of the heroes of the movie, would do some would paint something like that on that old fighter. But Kent <laughs> thought, oh no, no, we're gonna piss off George Lucas, and they're gonna sue us, and we can't we can't afford that. So you got to take it off. And uh, 
and uh, it, it's a shame that that we had to pull, that you know, we had that Mark had to pull it, and uh, <laughs> because it was it was really I, I Mark did that out totally on his own, and it was just brilliant. I thought I'd laugh my ass off at it. Well, here we are, all these years later, and uh, you got to write what Darth was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to with that for now. Yeah, for Boy, now. That, that illustration on the back of the box that has to has to be the worst uh, rendition of Scott and. Scott and I, I, I really am not fond of that picture. Well, actually, here's one of the questions from email. Um, yeah, it looked like Steve Jobs right was, before death. Uh, this is from, I believe, Richard Hammond, if I'm not mistaken. It says, uh, I thought I would, would also ask, uh, I still have the box for Space Quest Three. It is a stunning piece of work, really captures the imagination, and literally flies off the shelf. Uh, I was just wondering who designed it and whose idea it was to take the mallard embal- make the mallard embossed like that. I have run my fingers over it so many times. <laughs> Al Lowe would even be impressed. Worn out the embossing. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually pretty cool. We got very fortunate. We we had two things on that box cover. I'm, I'm, not to jump on Mark in front of Mark, but uh, we had uh, some of the box. Some of you may have boxes that actually have some foil outlining around the uh, Space Quest letters, uh, and then the embossing. We, we were amazed that they uh, they gave us the embossing. Yeah, I think part of the good. thing was yeah, and, but uh, they eventually pulled the foil thing because it saved them a cent, you know, two or two cents a box or something like that. Heaven forbid they should spend that much. And uh, but uh, yeah, the embossing thing I thought was very cool. It, it really, it really, it really is neat. I, I, I to my you know, I'm I'm holding the box right myself and doing the exact same thing that uh, that Richard is. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's it's this, pretty cool. This was the first box illustration done by uh, Sierra artist uh, John Shaw, mm-hmm. and he did several of the other boxes for us too, I think. But but uh, no, I was he was an awesome artist, and uh, he really was into this and did an excellent job for us. Yeah, I loved how he brought monolith burgers out there. And like Mark was saying, uh, I think in the last uh, podcast that uh, John was a real, John really helped uh, Mark, uh, really kind of make him, helped him kind of stretch his game a little bit in that, in, you know, that competition. That, and in it, not a, you know, that friendly competition, just kind of like, uh, I wanted to, you know, I want to do a little, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this guy's work in a little bit better kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think, I think Her, it was everybody's a, out there rubbing their boxes now. <laughs> Wow! Ooh. Wow! Stroke your uh, box. <laughs> so, Uh-oh. yeah. And by the way, John Shaw. I looked him up just the other day because I was kind of curious to know where he landed. And apparently, he has gone on to become this amazing aviation uh, art um, illustrator, painter. And oh, you can look him, you can look him up and see some of his amazing work out there. He's just incredible. He's definitely left us far behind and um, moved. On on to greater things well one thing that's funny to me about the back of the box is it's got you mark and scott in, in these like little toy rides from a fair or something where did that come that? from chuck e cheese or something mark i forget about that yeah yeah we went to uh, yeah you're right we went to a chuck e cheese and shot those pictures of us and these things and then robert <laughs> uh, excuse me john shaw took those and illustrated over them and made them look like little flying that's cool craft I actually have a big version of that somewhere. Oh, really? I've got a large photo of that. Oh, that's cool. You should scan it. I'm sure the chat room would love for you to scan it. We'd have a higher resolution picture. Okay. Come on. Scott, come on. Scott do you have to have yours? My, uh, I didn't get one. Not that, that I'm aware of, anyway. This should have been in the art, art archive. I've... Yeah, I did, I, 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 if I had gotten one of those, I would have kept it with our other stuff, like the uh, German magazine cover and stuff like that does everybody want me to go get it and scan it and send it and post it yeah chat room <laughs> art of sierra yeah there's a there's some yeses coming in here now all right <laughs> a whole bunch of yeses okay uh, most motion is carried yep see mark i asked you to do that months ago what's wrong with you <laughs> now you're gonna do it see how it is Speaking of 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 having to t- to to tell people that you idolize to do stuff, jeez. All right. So what we're gonna do now is um we're gonna go and watch the two promo videos, and I'm gonna try to turn the volume down a little a good bit on them. But uh, if you guys, I'd love for you guys to share with everybody some of the 
fun facts or anything like that that you have on each one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and, and get okay, that. I've got to go dig that out. Be right back. Up on the screen. <laughs> He's going to dig it out right now. <laughs> He's been in the same house for 21 years. That'll be a miracle. No. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice house, but uh, 21 years with raising kids and stuff, if he actually knows where it is, I'm impressed. Yeah, no doubt. We'll uh, we'll wait for him to come back there. But, um... Gorier deaths in Space Quest 3. Any specific reason? Um, <laughs> you know, you just got to go bigger, better, and badder. <laughs> There you go. Let's pause it right about here. There we go. At the Cinematron. Yes, yeah, so it is MT32 music uh, that Chris is trying to pull up for you guys as we run things. Yeah. This is uh, this is going to be the first video we we um, we go through. Didn't you just dig up your MT32 a couple weeks ago out of your uh, parents' house? Yeah, uh, I sure did. Thing? I found it at my parents' house. Um, when I got married and moved out, uh, and they they shortly after that they moved um, uh, to a different house as well, and it all got packed up. And unfortunately, I lost the power supply, so I bought another one off of eBay, oh. and um, and it it doesn't work. The power supply works, but the MT32 doesn't. Luckily, and I know my dad's listening to this, so I know uh -oh. he's probably working on it right now. Hello, right, Mr. Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry for anything I might say bad about Chris. <laughs> but uh, he, he's an electrical engineer, so he is going to uh, try and help me fix it. Now that all the people out there on the internet have heard it, they'll be expecting my MT32 to be working. <laughs> so they're a little more pressure there, Mr. Pope, <laughs> yeah. who I met and who is a very, very nice man and, uh, <laughs> and uh, who Chris is very fortunate to have as a father. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he knows. He knows. I, I'm very appreciative. I would have never gotten to be addicted to these games without him. So seriously, I'm. I'm. Really, I'm I was really glad to meet him, and uh, and I hope someday we will be able to have that beer. Beer? Did somebody say beer? <laughs> Mark came running back. Yeah, <laughs> beer. Don't rub it. Don't rub it in, Mark. By the way, yeah. people, Mark Crow has some beer from our official brewer, Sound Brewery, who just won some national awards. Well. You know, I found a way for our listeners out there to get some of this beer. Um, you know that when you do the rap party up in Oakhurst, that the official brewery will have to be catering. Oh, so absolutely. For for a measly ten grand, you guys will be flown yeah, out there pittance. in a hotel. You'll get to stay in a hotel, come to the rap party, seated with Mark and Scott, catered to by the official brewery, and yeah, and and, and, and you the lunch what? in the park. We can we can sit and enjoy our beers. We can put it in brown paper bag and sit in front of the talking bear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and after a few, it'll sound, you know, you'll, <laughs> you Would really will cool think it's talking to you. What? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to do that. Definitely suitable for framing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we, uh, we ready to watch the promo? Yeah, let's. All right. This is at the Cinematron. Um, <laughs> and uh, again, as you guys, I may pause it a little bit as we go along, so that you, if you, there's anything special you guys want to share, but um, I will have something to share about this very room afterward. Cool. Well, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna start it. You can talk over. It. It's gonna be kind of low. I'm Sisbot and <laughs> what is it? Gee Ezer. <laughs> it was when Gene Siskel was still alive, and it was still Siskel and Ebert. I'm Fuss Sisbot, and this is Geek Geezer, software reviewers of the Daily Andromeda. Today's sneak preview is from the blockbuster Space Quest series, The Pirates of Pestilon, a fast-moving sci-fi flick full of action, satire, and suspense. You don't have to be an android to enjoy this animatronic. So there, you got your, you you got your glasses. <laughs> yeah, I'm still looking at tickets. Uh -oh. Yeah! Oh, the tickets, is, to... it, so is it frozen up? So Let's try this I'll refresh. I, th I, I always assume it's my my Alabama internet connection. Well, you guys are streaming with me on Skype, so we'll suck up uh, some bandwidth for you for sure. Yeah, uh, video's frozen. We'll just refresh your browser, guys. Um, on in the chat room. 
<laughs> There's it should Mark. have Mark frozen. <laughs> I, I've paused it, so it should have Mark frozen with his Twizzlers. His <laughs> Mark, Mark played this with tender perfection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was suitable for not ready for well, prime. I, I studied Saturday Ebert night. quite a while for this, for preparing <laughs> for this role. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, method acting. <laughs> method acting, that's it. Well, <laughs> he stayed in character so, during the whole shoot. Why don't we just... <laughs> Great and stuff. he gained a lot of weight. Yeah, it seems to lag a bit on the um, screen there for some reason. Yeah. But I guess uh, you know some of the main things there is um, you guys shot that at, if, if I'm not mistaken, in the credits of this video it says the Met, which is a little movie theater. Now, that was a brilliant, gripping performance by veteran heavy Arnoid <laughs> Robo Schwartz. I'll have to give this one a nose up. <laughs> to give this, this one a nose up. The turn of Space Quest is <laughs> beyond the original with mind bending graphics that reverse the laws of entropy. Yeah, I'll come back now. You... Alright, now I'm pausing it again right here at World of Wonders. So, if you guys are, if it's lagging for you, just refresh your screen. But, Scott, that's you narrating again, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you sound like you really had me on this one because uh, I was like, wow, they, they went and got themselves a, a professional VO narrator. And I was like, wait a minute, that's Scott. And you really did a great job. I mean, again, this well, is... Uh, and I, I, was a VO on, I was a VO on the the current inside copy video. Yeah, no, I knew well. that one. I didn't know it until I started <laughs> I talking did, to you. But My best Ted Koppel on that one. <laughs> I think you, you got a future that. in... Uh, Broadcasting there, Scott. You know what was funny, Mark, and this is real. This is true. When we were in, uh, when we were doing the SQ6 voices, I had the, uh, I had the agent for the uh, people that we cast for the uh, in in the Bay Area for the uh, for the voices, and she actually said, you know, if you ever think of well, doing some voices, uh, you know, here's my card. Uh, get, let me know, and uh, you know, I think we can find you some work. And I just thought she was totally stroking me because of, uh, you know, because you know she wanted us to, you know, keep her in mind for future projects, but. I've heard it from a few people, so. Now this, uh, this, this voice of, uh, <laughs> you alien scum, you, was that you, Mark, that did that voice, or who did that voice? No, that was actually, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, he's the guy that shot the video for Paul, Paul ah, the Pledge, he shot Paul the, the Pledge. video for us. Yeah, very cool. The man who changed one room so badly that it had to be nailed shut. <laughs> Our, our really to tiny, elaborate on that one. We had a really tiny video studio that was in the that was just off of the graphics art graphic arts department, and Paul had his his desk uh, that they'd made for him with the monitors and stuff, and he did all the. Paul had a digestive issue. <laughs> I guess I could put it that way. Uh, it didn't seem to bother him. Just everybody around. Lactose intolerant. Him. Uh, lactose intolerant. Uh, I think um, vegetable intolerant, meat intolerant, air intolerant. Um, he had a few. He just had a couple things. I mean, he he liked to eat, and, and like I said, it didn't bother him a bit. <laughs> he was just fine with it. And when somebody would mention something, he'd just laugh his ass off. But he 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 uh he did like the fact that it kept him kept people from bugging him too much. <laughs> it was very successful. So these were the these weren't the uh, the the latest. No, uh, noses that you guys wore. These were a different kind of, of uh, Andromedan noses. Because they look a little different. They look like the ones that uh, the latest. I, th I think these were the hollow ones that you made, Mark? The, the first ones? Yeah. Could yeah. be. This, these are the ones we were talking I couldn't tell you because I, I can't see you right now. Yeah, chat room. I've paused it. I keep. I've, I've paused it a bit. So refresh your your screens if you need to. But I've as we've stopped to talk a little bit. I've paused the uh, the videos a little bit here for everybody. Yeah, the Met Cinema. Uh, yeah, the Met Cinema. I think whenever I see the Met Cinema now, I think of uh, I, there's an old movie with Paul Newman called HUD, and uh, there's a scene where they have they find out that their cattle have hoof and mouth disease. And uh, they herd them all in there, and all these guys stand around the edge with, with guns and then kill all the cattle. 
one day uh, they called everybody from Sierra in here to this very room, and managers stood along the edges, which were which were level, uh, holding each of them had a handful of envelopes, and uh, Ken got up, I think it was Ken, got up and gave the news that, about layoffs, and, or maybe it was our PR person that used to say uh a lot, and because um, we used to sit and count when she would talk how many times she said uh, and after a while people would be chuckling and she didn't understand why. She was a really nice lady. It was un- it was cruel of us probably, but uh, at the end, everybody these guys just stood there watched us while the, we got the bad news, and then they everybody got an envelope and you had to look at it, and they were the exact same letters, but they said you weren't or you weren't being your, your services were either were or weren't being maintained uh, by uh, by Sierra, that, and uh, so it was a very unpleasant. So place this happened at the Met Cinema, you said? This very room. Really? Yep. Wow. Now, how, what year was that? Uh, I think was that after you was that after you were gone, Mark? Or yeah, that uh, must. Uh, well, you know what? I do recall us getting herded in there for something. Something was handed out out to everybody. I can't remember, but I don't think it. It wasn't the, the chainsaw. Yeah, we incident. were in there a couple times. Yeah, we were in there, and then I think we also had one at the Bass Lake Cinema, where we had to dodge bats. There used to have bats <laughs> hanging in. There. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The old Bass Lake Cinema, <laughs> literally. And they well, would yeah, those around. were the only facilities in town that were big enough to hold everybody in one place other than, well, the studio. So I just started the video up for just a second, and I paused it on the monolith. Now, the song. <laughs> Who came up with the words? And, you know, obviously the tune is, is obvious where that came from. But, like, <laughs> somebody wrote a song about monolith. How did well, I think that, that was Paul Paul's idea, the guy that... Uh, the, did the video, um, but I can't remember if uh, he had, had enlisted us to write that or not. I honestly don't remember where that came from. Did you write that, Scott? No, I don't there... think so. I, I I don't recall ever writing lyrics. It sounds like Paul. Some... Yeah, Paul. <laughs> he was Paul a pretty was, funny guy. Yeah, he, he, you know, even though I'm knocking him about how he uh, changed the uh, environmental quality of the room he was in, uh, Paul was a really cool guy, really funny guy, great, just really great sense of humor and really a uh, good guy to work with, uh, and. Uh, uh, he's. I know he's out there someplace. We, I've I've seen him. His name pop up on Facebook uh, here and there, and uh, so we, we wish really? you well, Paul, wherever you are. You'd look him up. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, I think he. I think he may be in the northwest. He's somewhere on the west coast for sure. But uh, yeah, he was he was a cool guy. He was he was really young when he was there at Sierra, and uh, but just you know, great sense of humor. He could tell a joke, and uh, so he was fun to he was fun to hang around as long as you weren't in a confined space with him. <laughs> as long as you weren't in a confined space with him. <laughs> wow. Craziness. Are you serious, Ken? Ken says he's a pastor in Oakhurst. Wow. We'll have to get him to, to hey, sing, Ken. sing the monolith song. All right. Well, um, here comes the second promo. We're going to have to kind of pick up some speed through this one, so we'll be able to have enough time to get through the second part, which is the commentary here. Let's see. There are some MP32s out there for anybody who's interested in them. Uh, I I know people have been buying them on eBay. Not this one. Why did the the same one start playing again here? Let's try this. Brat, Twitch TV. Curse you, Twitch. All right, here we go. Uh oh, not this one. <laughs> oh no. Those two guys from Andromeda decided to rid the universe of boring software space games. They had a cosmic concept. Yes, I'm going to pause it for just a second. On... Yeah, I, did, I didn't do narration on this one. I'm not, I think it must have been Paul. Yeah. So you guys, uh, it, it should get. It should be paused. Well, we're, Doesn't we're, sound like Paul either, unless he changes. Voice. No, this was a um, this was a sound alike of a famous uh, guy by the name of Paul Fries, who was real popular back in the day. Did a lot of uh, did a lot of. He had a very distinctive voice. He was in everything. Did a lot of movie trailers, cartoons. Oh, okay. Um, and this was a sound alike. We couldn't afford Paul Fries, so we found this guy. You guys in the chat room, the reason why we're not turning the uh, the audio up is because we're 
going to allow Scott and Mark to, to commentary a bit, so we don't want it to outdo it. But if you if want you're to seeing listen... the freeze frame right now of, uh, of uh, the two guys from Andromeda, behind me on the left, you can oh, see yeah, the Space Quest yeah. thing that Mark made that, that's a paper and has all the little thing, things that he put that he glued to it, and that was what was used for the uh, Space Quest 2 box. There we go. You can sort of see it better now. I just. By the way, that is our office where we worked, and um, that's the little keyboard that I did the first Space Quest song on. Oh, cool. See, there's some trivia. <laughs> And by the way, guys, we are paused on the video. It's not just skipping on you. <laughs> but yeah, look at that decor, man. We went all out, didn't we? We had our offices decked out. <laughs> yeah, cool. it was totally awesome. Yeah, hey, the arm salute. Yeah, we, we looked at it. We thought it was pretty silly, but uh, it, I think it was fitting. Thank you for, for uh, mentioning that. Uh, the right amount of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Big Harry Marty mentioned the arm salute. Yeah. Very cool. All right, right I'll, I'll start it back up. Yeah, now. there you go. Now you can see the space coast. You can see it's actually starting to wilt a little bit uh, because of its weight, you know, because of uh, how it was It was pretty large and it was just, what, thin, relatively thin cardboard, Ooh, right? Yeah, it was pretty thin, yeah. It was just meant for one-time use, and uh, yeah, it's definitely seen better days at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys got your, what is that, spandex? <laughs> no, those are sweatpants. <laughs> But this yeah, is uh, this is this was our office just uh, inside the um, the red the Redwood Building there in Oakhurst on the second floor. Very cool. Yes, you are getting a, a prototype for three hundred deep shooter deep shot deep shotter. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pause it again right out front of the the Redwood Building. I got my, yeah, that Redwood building, I got my vasectomy in there, too. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, no, I'm not, and no, I'm not talking about from Ken. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun fact. Yeah. yeah I was too looking much on info, you bet. Google Earth at the building, and somebody actually turned it into a 3D model. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, man. That pretty is cool. cool. Oh, yeah, I did see the, the Redwood building. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw that. Um it was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So we are paused again, guys. So you guys know. I like this the... is another. This is another borrowed vehicle. <laughs> sort of like how we borrowed the uh, borrowed the uh, Corvette for Space Quest Two. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I don't think we traded up there, Scott. No, it, it looks like Corvette we went down. We went uh... from Ameri we went went from an American muscle car to a to a rice burner, I guess. Uh... <laughs> Not actually. I, I should, I, I'm not. I don't mean to. Wow. I like. I have a Toyota. Sorry. Um, this last. It's. I've been driving it for 15 years. I think. It's been so nice to me. It's got me everywhere without fail. <laughs> you just never know what'll come out. All right. Here we go. Hit and play again. <laughs> Sierra professional building. That's awesome. I love these uh, yeah. uh, Paul's the professional again. building was should have been in quotes. <laughs> so here it Actually, is. Um... The story behind the building, though, is it was originally made to hold uh, approximately 150 people, but uh, after Ken had had commissioned the building and uh, they'd gone into construction, uh, just things hit the the stuff hit the fan in the industry. I mean, not just for Sierra, but a lot of companies. A lot of companies disappeared off the face of the. Of the, well, that uh, was that, that was the big cart. Um, exactly. Thing, right. Yeah. Definitely. And so it's we ended up moving in crash. there. With, we moved in there with something like thirty-five to forty people when it was made, meant to hold one hundred and fifty. So uh, wow. eventually, uh, we we used mo we used it all for a while, and then then we uh, then Ken worked out a deal to start leasing off parts of it. So that's when it became the professional building. And why there was a doctor's office in there, and why I'm, I gave you too much information about getting a vasectomy there. Yeah, I'm gonna pause it again here. You guys will see the the white coats coming up. <laughs> see Mark, see much, see what a, a natural actor you are. Yeah, you guys yeah. look really scared. Yeah, just throw a rubber nose on me and some sunglasses, and I'm good. Here come the here come the the zombies before the zombie days are cool. <laughs> I, I'm not sure who's on the left. I know John. I think John Williams is on the right. Ken's brother and uh, the guy who's been real supportive of us. Well, uh, I could tell you who that is on the far left. 
of the screen, that is Doug Oldfield. That is is the, that Doug? Oh, man. That is the, cre- the creator of uh, uh, Astro, Chicken Astro Chicken himself. Awesome. And, and the Fun Seeker's Guide to Eastern Madera County. That was his first project when he came out of accounting and uh, uh, and into a game programming. He, that's how he learned AGI and SCI. <laughs> and uh, Doug, I met Doug years before Sierra, uh, and uh, I actually, thanks to him, I got my job there because oh, well, thanks actually to the guy who burned down the building that he, that uh, Doug and my uh, wife of that time worked in. They. Uh, he torched he torched the old uh, sugar silver tip uh, lodge and fish camp uh, north of Oakhurst and just south of Yosemite and uh, Doug had to find a job and he got one copying discs on apples. Yeah, Thomas, I am blessed with some unusually large ears. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Here is uh, I'm going to pause it again on. Uh, I don't think you can take it, Captain. The screen where it's got all of you guys together. Yeah, there's Doug on the right. Is that that looks like Carlos next to him? Um, ah, I forget who that is next to him. And then Johnny, and I don't recognize the guy on the left. <laughs> Turn it up. Yeah, you can there. see the you can see the chains around us. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys in the chat room, if you want to, you can listen to the video again uh, for that. It's in YouTube, or it's, it's actually on our the website as well. Uh, we did kind of have it low on purpose, but uh, feel free to check those out. Those are out there. So yeah. You guys can hear them in all their glory. So. But this, oh, these, yeah. These, yeah. these video things were things we really had a lot of fun doing, and it was kind of a nice little break from working on the games and stuff, and, and um, we always enjoyed Today. working on those. The daily grind, definitely. How long, long did it take you guys to video a film all that? Did you do all both videos like in a... I mean, obviously you did them separate, but like all the filming per video in one day, or did you spread it out, or what? Oh, no, we don't, we didn't have time to do more than one day based on things. But like, for instance, we had to rent a smoke machine. Oh, that was hideous smelling. Remember that, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, the new smoke machines are better, as I understand it, but uh, they, they use yeah. some kind of... Uh, they, nasty burn, ass they, they actually burn oil of some kind. Yeah. So it's this real. It was pretty terrible. We were looking for clean air after smoke. Each take. Yeah, but it was fun. It was fun. Like Mark said, it was such a great. It was a great break. And uh, and then all the everybody that we we just grabbed people and said, hey, put on this white coat, or you know, do this <laughs> or do that, or come into the studio and do a voice. And and uh, and it was it was really fun. And and, and I think uh, I think it was fun for the people that that got a chance to be involved in them who didn't usually get a chance to get, you know, get seen or get credit. The people that were, you know, behind the scenes and working on the games and, you know, doing various things that made Sierra run. So yeah. it was it was fun to be able to include people like that. And now here they all are, uh, forever immortalized on YouTube. Yeah, yes, some, some, some to their delight and some to their disdain. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to move now into the official commentary for the playthrough. Um, guys, the commentary that's out there was, was done um, on a sound blaster as opposed to a Roland. I'm going to probably try to match up some of the Roland music instead, though, uh, in the background, but it is going to be played lightly. Remember, if you want to hear the, the music and all that, you can always go out there and check it out. But um, the whole idea is to have it kind of playing lightly in the background, but the main thing is to hear from Scott and Mark so they can, they can tell us about the uh, the exciting stuff that that went on behind the scenes. I tried to make that sound dramatic, but probably failed miserably. Anyway, is, every, we, is everybody else having issues with the video playback? Well, it's paused I, right now, guys. It's paused. Oh, on it's the paused. End. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have said that. Um, but I'm about to start it back up now, so you guys will be able to hear that. So here you go. So, Pirates of Pestilon coming up. Again, the music might not match just <coughs> perfectly, but at least you'll get to hear it with the Roland. There was no playthroughs with the Roland MT32 I could find. And you can, you can hear the emphasis of the drums here, because Bob was the drummer. Yep. Yeah. 
How's the video looking on everybody's end? Is it coming through? I'll tell you if I pause it. Go ahead, light speeder. Go pick up food. We'll wait for you. We'll just... <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody, just hold on. Light speeder has to get food. Oh, okay, hold on. Pause. <laughs> Let's just be back back here in, a, in an hour. Don't worry, Justin TV will record it. <laughs> just fix this up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm upset about Justin TV, but I will have a high quality version for everybody. I promise. Who did the uh, messages for MT32? One of the chat rooms asks. You guys knew that. I think said something the other day about somebody who did that. The messages? You mean the ones that yeah, show up on the Yeah, was that Mark Sieber or who? Yeah, I think, the, it, it, yeah, it was something that the uh, music department had to do because uh, they only, only they knew where how the data format was. So here's a question. I'm going to pause it, guys, um, for just a second. Cause this is gonna... Oh, Ken says Mark did it. This is a question uh, that came up from one of the, uh, one of the emails I had gotten. And hey. the question was the, the robot here in the beginning um, and the, the text popping up on the screen. The person writing in was uh, saying that he, uh, his name is Ismail Saeed, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name. But uh, he wanted to know if Sounds the writing, familiar. the writing that was, uh, let me back up a little. Here it is, the writing uh, meant anything. Was there any significance to the writing? Because like the decoder, you get later in the game, you know, Astro Chicken thing, right, right, can right. decode it. Did you guys plan anything or plot anything there for that, or was this just, just random codes? No, I think that was just random at that point. Okay. Yeah, it, it just illustrated that this was somebody from another from another civilization, and uh, you know, that, I mean, actually, there were, it was machine. It was uh, there were no real humans, but this was just a d data display that probably was being recorded for whoever ran this operation later. Yeah. And honestly, you know, the thought never even occurred to me that. After later on, when we did the code for in Space Quest Four, that people might interpret this as being a message that used that same same well, language. Well, yeah, the, the coder for the Astro Chicken machine, though, I think, is what he was saying. Oh, right, right, um, the Astro Chicken machine. Yeah. All right, I'm starting it back up, so video should start here. And make sure. That yeah, not even not related to that at all, actually. Yeah, we may not have had Astro Chicken in mind it yet at this point yet because right. that's how we did things. That's how you rolled. That's, that's how, how we. we... <laughs> <laughs> it could be Big Harry Marty. We don't know. Uh, Space Quest Three was We're different SCI alien. for the you guys asking in the chat room. SCI. Yep. SQ Three was the beginning of SCI. Yep. Go oh, the garbage freighter. Another brilliant artwork. Uh, when you see, I love the artwork of Roger laying there, and you kind of have this, the reflection of the glass uh, on there. Uh, David six eight five eight's on to us. He, he figured out the code. Crack the code. Uh -oh. <laughs> he cracked the code. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh Regarding SCI, uh, there was there was SCI and then there was SCI 32, which is what Space Quest 4 was in. Uh, the art the art tools weren't ready, but the code was beginning to evolve. Okay, I'm gonna pause it for just a second. Oh, William Ji saw this in Hercules. Oh man, you are a gamer. All right, it should be unpaused now. So you guys should have Roger. Chilling in his capsule. And we followed the convention of all sci fi things where uh, once you're in stasis and you've been in there for several years, you wake up with your, your hair perfectly combed and, uh, make, and your fresh makeup on. <laughs> so I'm paused for just a second on. Um, 
and uh, you guys will see it pause. So this is the, uh, <laughs> here it is right here, the infamous scene you guys were talking about, I believe. Now, I always thought this one blue thing. Oh, and the Jupiter, too, from uh, yeah, the Lost in Space. Lost in Space, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. this blue thing, I always thought, Mark, was that like some kind of a uh, an alien French tickler? or a... uh, Scott, No comment? No comment. <laughs> oh, Scott. All right. Um, There's so... the Acme rocket that he was talking about, though. Yeah, that's great. But... And probably, probably Wiley is buried on the nose of it somewhere. So I have a question uh, myself here. In in some of the promos, or at least in a magazine, there was like a almost like a, a bulldog, like what you saw in Ghostbusters, like uh, in this particular oh, yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind what happened with that idea? Actually, I can't because I don't remember. Uh, just I uh, think that was in there initially as a placeholder object of some kind, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I honestly don't remember how that got in there, or it, but it's certainly not in the final game. Yeah, until fans brought it to our attention, we were both going, huh? And uh, and then finally Mark came up with a, a little memory of it somehow. But yeah, it doesn't have any detail, so you can you can tell that he didn't really intend it to do anything, mm -hmm. or you know, because look at the detail on everything else. It was just a green blob that you could barely make out as a dog or a bulldog, whatever. Yeah. All right, well, that was that's cool. So here we go, we'll start it back up. I love the music in the garbage freighter area. Really cool. Yeah, it really set, sets the atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry say. we didn't have the TARDIS in there. I, was, I, was, uh, I wasn't up to Doctor Who in those days. <laughs> but, look out now. question from Slipgate. Did the game design of the Junk Freighter get planned out in advance or after the fact? Planned um, out in advance. As I'm, opposed to... I'm wondering about things like the warp motivator being on the first screen uh, at the end of the ship. And for the ship, the whole wiring thing. Like, I guess the puzzle and, and all of that. Oh, tough one on that one. Hmm. I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we we planned out the freight. We definitely planned out the freight uh, freight uh, and the puzzles. We needed. We knew we needed a puzzle, some way to bring the uh, the mallard to life. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. This that. whole thing was a, a designed puzzle for sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Now the video should not be pausing. It's it should be playing straight through now. Yeah. It's pretty halted for is me. Is it lagging for you guys? Yeah. It's stuck on, uh, on a message box. Oh, this is great. I wonder what's going on with it. That's All right. right I'm going uh, to pause it for just a second. Hopefully uh, we can... That's right. Uh, Ped Pedison? <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But yeah, Johnny... Uh, uh, Oh, Johnny Phantom did play the. He got his MT32 literally just in time for his marathon of 16 plus hours, and uh, was able to play the MT32 music, which was very cool. And uh, our hats off again to Johnny for that. Uh, the guy really, uh, the poor guy looked like uh, I don't know. He looked like he'd been hit with a phaser a few times. <laughs> but come the end of it. All right, here we go. We'll start it back up, guys. Well, that's cool, that Amiga link that guy sent, um, or somebody sent. Oh, you have the picture. Oh, a talking Roger Wilco. Yeah, they actually had a voice synthesizer. So I love the, you know, the, is it, how's the video looking on your end? Still going? Yeah, he's, he's, he's moved into the uh, Saturn rocket uh, fell. Okay. Let's walk back out. Actually, Chris is in a, uh, as far as Chris's connection, he's in a very good place for uh, for internet and so on. Uh, he, yeah. He's near a very major hub. So, uh, pretty the problem good. Is a 30 meg download connection. 
Yeah, so it's definitely not his. Any pro- I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the most likely weak spot on it. Five torrents right now, so I've kind of cut my torrenting down a little bit. So, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what are you downloading, Chris? I'm downloading Space Quest playthroughs, okay? Let's see. <laughs> Very cool. I love this robot in the in the in the this room over here uh, where you jump Thanks, on me, the. Thanks, Jump I'm on sorry. the grabber, as it's called. It's like, it looks like reminds me of Johnny Five from Short Circuit. <laughs> yeah, I upped my frames per second, so hopefully that'll that'll give us some better. Oddly enough, you'd think lowering the frames per second would would help, but no, it's the opposite in this case. The motivator. <laughs> <laughs> or that's or like Ken like to think of himself the motivator Ken Ken Williams not Ken Allen at least not in that way I love the this death is... of uh, falling in that chopper thing can't wait till we get to the death sequences and do that one. <laughs> this was fun st- times too because we were seeing so much sis- uh, system evolution and uh, uh, like uh, proximity of, of of Roger to uh, a sound source. Uh, things uh, as we saw between this and especially in Space Quest Four, if you're walking through the uh, the uh, Galaxy Galleria. You notice that as you get closer to a store, the sound that's coming out and it gets grows louder, and then as you move away, it grows softer. Yeah. And that was one of the really cool things the systems guys put in. And the, the, our, you know, we can't. That's one thing. Those the systems guys don't. Uh, you know, their names are on the credits. They don't get enough uh, enough credit for the cool things they did for us. Here's a. Oh, I forgot about the Tinker Toys. Here's a question, real quick, for you. Adrian TV in the chat room says, "I still don't know how did Mark draw this. I mean." Did you have custom tools for the vector format, and did you have gradients as fill colors? Uh, at this point in time, no, we didn't have gradients. Uh, it all had to be done with lines, uh, you know, diagonal lines. I would draw diagonal lines back and forth, back and forth to fill in areas with a gradient. Yeah, if you, uh, there's a YouTube video of Mark drawing the uh, opening for those of you who don't know, I know some, a lot of you do with it. So there's a, a YouTube video of the, uh, sh- the the place where when you see the uh, ship being pulled up into the junk freighter and the and the and the robot sitting there. There's a video of that scene being rendered by Mark. I mean, it, sh- it sh- shows the uh, actually what it does is it shows the uh, system building the picture. Uh, they were kept. They weren't shown on screen until they were actually finished. But it shows you step by step what Mark actually had to do, but in very fast time compared to what he actually had to deal with. I just paused the video for a second on the scene you're talking about, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you guys should see the um, the big head. This is the scene you're talking about, right, Scott? Uh, no, actually, what I was referring to is the uh, that uh, picture that the actual. There's an actual uh, you, uh, video of the. Uh, of the beginning, when when the ship is floating by, and all of a sudden the tractor beam starts to work, and and it cuts to the inside shot where you're looking out the window. There's a robot on the left hand side. He's looking out, and you see the ship rising yeah. up. That's the uh, picture I meant. Well, the one but... I saw on YouTube was this scene, but oh, know. this one's on there too. Yeah, I didn't okay. realize. Yeah, there there's s- there are several. I think cool. they're all oh, in the okay. same video, aren't they? Oh, oh they? yeah. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Aluminum mallard. How did you come up with the idea for that? Prime. That was, that was Mark's invention. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the ship design was something I toiled over for, I think, about a week trying to come up with the uh, Roger's ship. Sorry about that. And uh, the aluminum mallard, of course, is just a is a is a takeoff on the Millennium Falcon. Stand by, guys, and I'll have part two of the playthrough coming up here. Oh, my pod from 2001 is gone. Mark made me very happy by putting in the uh, pod from 2001. <laughs> Open the pod bay door, Hal. <laughs> and uh, he also had, uh, I think it was, wasn't, the, wasn't the, there was something sticking up out of the garbage with three tubes and then a, a plate on the front. Wasn't that from like, uh, what was it, Star Wars uh, 6, I think, or whatever, the, where they're, the, things, the things that they were riding through the, the uh, forest? I th- wasn't oh, sure if that the, uh, 
videos speeder back. Bike, speeder bikes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had so many cool things in there, and I think a I lot of know, people... we were throwing anything anything and everything yeah, into that yeah, scene. It, it's down, on the left, down to the left of the uh, pod. I think I, I thought that was what that was from. I, I could be mistaken. So many cool things in there, like the you know, like the uh, Tinker Toys and uh, all that stuff. I mean, he definitely <laughs> it was like the whole kitchen sink of uh, cool stuff. Yeah, I have to say, of all the games, this one I had the most fun with. Just coming up with, um, well, the whole the whole you know us coming up with the concept of having your own spaceship and being able to take off and fix it, repair it, and take off and go traveling across the universe. Um, no, we didn't have any trouble with science, sci-fi fiction that we were able to steal from, or, or, or I mean, uh, sat- satirize. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, satir- yeah. satirize. Was Spaceballs out at this point? I believe it was, wasn't it? 1980. Yeah, oh, probably. Another brilliant part of the game, huh. getting to fly away. Vapor. How did you guys come up with a different planet names? Anything in particular? Uh, a lot of that stuff we just pulled out of our butts. It's like, hey, this sounds like <laughs> this sounds funny. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. Cool, but Plebit. Well, that kind of. <laughs> I lost my There were some, some that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know where they came from, Scott. <laughs> Ortega, Ortega, because it was hot, and right. uh, flea, flea butt. I, I turned flea butt into flea butt, and uh, I don't have any idea what made me think of that. I really, I'm, cl- I, I couldn't tell you to this day. I'd, I would need a lobotomy or electroshock th- shock therapy to, or some kind of memory regression therapy to get, to be able to remember that. But uh, Ortega was a natural. It would have been hot now because I love like that much more. This is the Sound Blaster music, guys, because I don't have the MT32 music on me for this particular right here. I do for Fester's World of Wonders, though. So. Yeah, I'm coming up with planet names. I mean, there are some word association. That what immediately comes to mind when, when you think of it, a certain type of planet, and so... Just roll with that. Well, yeah, the sand flea butt, flea butt was uh, just you know sand fleas. It was just, I mean, I that's the closest thing I can think of that made that inspired uh, some of that. I think. Yeah, we'll get to the. Um, you guys are asking I, a question about the killing the uh, Arnoid. We'll get to that in just a second as well. Um, there's a email question very similar to the one that just went up in the chat room. So, give us just a minute. Yeah, we had some uh, sand fleet issues at Bass Lake. Oh, really? One time. Yeah, one time when I went there, and uh, I think that might have stuck in my head. I thought that was crabs. <laughs> Mark, I went to the free clinic and got that taken care of. <laughs> the same one that was in the red building. <laughs> no, that was too close to home. <laughs> Hello, computer Ronan. Sorry you're late. But we're glad you're here. So I'm gonna pause the video for a second because I got. Did question. that guy come back with his food? Did he bring enough for everybody? <laughs> I think he's still gone. Either that, or he's eating and he can't type with his mouth full. Which is, you know, I guess his parents taught him well. So Me here, not so much as I'm eating right now. So here's a question for you. Um, this is uh, another question from Ismail Saeed. Uh, the sand here. It says, uh, Does Scott remember? It being difficult to get Roger to walk against the sand grain or uphill or, you know, to slow him down or the, the programming, I guess, here is the question as far as, like, going across the sand dudes. Was that part of the system or how did you it, do that? There there was a way to do it system-wise. Um, I, I can't remember if you needed, needed to give me any special art or not, Mark. But uh, uh, there, we did have some things in the system called step size and, and so on, and, and we could also um, control how often, how, how many, how many times, how many passes through 
uh, the CPU made through the uh, code that uh, we actually animated Roger. So I was able to do some cool stuff with you know because because of that. Um, I, I had to fake some of the stuff in in the in Space Quest One and Two. Um, you know where he where he walked through on different surfaces and uh, on you know on the steps for instance having him going going up slowly up the steps from in uh, in, in Vohal's asteroid you know I I just I just you know I I just manually did that but uh, I I just I think I I think I probably used some some kind of a loop to do that but uh, mm-hmm. yeah the, the guys gave us more and more tools uh, for the for us for those of us coding uh, with SCI and then then SCI thirty two. Very cool. All right, video is paused for just a second here. Yeah, uh, no, that took a bit of work on your part, Scott, to make that so that he could actually disappear behind the sand dunes and keep walking and into the yeah. distance. Well, it was all teamwork too, Mark. I mean, because you had you put in the you had you put in the priorities, and then I had to make sure that Roger stayed in the in the because uh, once he dropped down, he would have uh, because of the way our the system was set up. Uh, once he dropped down behind the sand dune, his uh, his coordinates would have popped him back through, so I had to I had to manually force him to uh, to for the system to think that he was still up screen further, so that he wouldn't pop back through the the priority screen. All right, um, sorry, I had to fix the video, guys. All yeah, right. Yeah, for those who don't know, there's more than one screen actually here. There's a, a there's another screen that has uh, priorities, what we, what we call priority bands, and so on. And uh, we had sixteen. What was it sixteen, Mark? I think that we had yeah. to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you know, that's how that's how Roger actually uh, disappeared behind things based on his uh, his his uh, coordinate up screen. Uh, hey guys, Ken Williams here. Just watching the show, bringing back a lot of great memories. Cabo Ken. Okay, Ken, prove to me it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are you things, you, there are things you only you. And, there are things only you and I know. Yeah, Ken never uses exclamation points. All right, I'm going to start it back up. I'm going to start the music, and here we go. This is MT32. I love this music. Three, the, with a real slim shady. Let me stand up. With the real slim shady? <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah, uh, ask uh, Cabo Ken something that only Ken would know, Scott. I'd do that, but it would incriminate both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, who was your housekeeper's name? The real Elkers? Ken wouldn't ask if that was Super, super Tramp because Ken and Bob Siebenberg, <laughs> uh, uh were the one. They were the one. That's how the uh, how we got Bob. Ken knew about Bob, Bob way before we did because uh, Bob approached Ken. So I think I've got confirmation that it really is Ken Williams, um, according to Ben, our uh, buddy. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> hey, Ken, what was who is what was the name of your housekeeper in uh, Oakhurst? <laughs> and why doesn't she like me? <laughs> yeah, what event occurred in your house? Caused her to have a pretty bad day. Now we're giving him too much info. No, you never said her name. Well, you know what? That's uh, I'm starting to. Okay, you're, you're starting to convince me. Uh, lots of parties at my house, uh, guys. I think you're busted. That's Ken, man. 
Yeah, we're busted. Busted. Oh, man. It's Ken. Doris? Yep. Yep. That and was the name. Thanks, Ben, for clarifying that but on I'm Skype with you. But I'm actually remember that. Yeah, if it isn't Ken, it's pretty impressive. It's but, either uh, that or Ken's stalker. <laughs> hey, it's Fester. Fester. Hey, well, if it is, if we're glad to have you, Ken. Thank you very much for showing. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. We couldn't have done these things without you, man. And we appreciate all the enthusiasm that you gave, showed us. And for saying, okay, make a map. <laughs> Those magic words are what spawned. Hey, or add on a stick. Us. Where can I get one? Yeah. So, oh, and, and this, I do need to pause it here for a second because here's some questions. Um, a couple of questions have come up about the the deaths of Arnoid, um, and I don't know if it showed it showed the second one in this particular video, but I'm sure we'll see it in the death se uh, scenes. But um, let's see. Did you? This is another one from Ismail. Uh, did you come up with the two ways to defeat Arnoid as you were making the area, or did you? have those planned uh, ahead of time? Was it one of those things, I guess what, what he's asking was, it, was it one of those things where it was seat of the pants, like, hey, we, we've already written to kill him this way, why don't we write a second way to kill him? Like, what was the decision making that went on right there? Uh, I'm trying to recall, but I mean, we had that elaborate, elaborate uh, death sequence that we planned out in, in the World of Wonders, mm -hmm. and I think, I think the other one, you correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I'm just trying to recall, but I think the other one was kind of an afterthought. Hey, here's another opportunity to, to kill him off, and it was pretty relatively easy to, to do with that that overhang rock cave thing. That was that, is that the one we're talking about? Yeah, I've got it paused yeah. right on that scene right now. So yeah, the video definitely. is paused. We were, we were trying to stretch ourselves as artists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 and and uh, I, sh I should say, in reality, it's not like we ever wanted to make more work for ourselves. But uh, it was, you know, there were there were. It was one of the. It, we really were trying to make Space Quest Three, uh, you know, bigger and better than the, free, the first two. Sure. And, uh, Provide some alternate um, ways of getting or getting around puzzle hurdles. Yeah. Very so we cool. gave you two. Very. Cool. <laughs> two for the price of one. Daventry would be safer. <laughs> So there he is, using the Orat on the stick to, to grab the belt. Awesome. Yeah, I remember. I remember when Ken taught me how to do the uh, do the uh, coding for the, uh, um, the slot machine in, in, in Space Quest One because I was trying to do it the stupidest way. I, mean, I was making so much work for myself, and he said, "No, just do this, and then do this," and I was like. Duh. <laughs> but, but your way had deeper meaning, Scott, and it's like I think so, and, and I think it was I think that was I think it was more of a purist, uh, ignorant uh, that I was going for. Here's the sound blaster music. But learning from to program from Ken was like drinking from a fire hose because of his knowledge, and uh, so uh, I got wet. And I need to hang on. I'll get the uh, the MT32 music up here for you guys. If Ken can remember who drew the artwork for the cover of High Res Football, then it's not him probably because he's got so many details in his head about his the history of his company. That would be a straight up miracle. <laughs> Roberta's mom. Wow. Okay. Ken, I still have some old stuff like the high res soccer and uh uh where you put Fill in the shrink wrap. Here is the legendary song that everybody loves. <laughs> yes, I did admit from drinking from Ken's fire hose. <laughs> you guys are some really sick suckers. Oh come on. <laughs> Talking about alien sex toys earlier in the junkyard area. I mean, come on. I don't think it's a little bit too 
Yeah, it's cool. You know, I'm serious. When I say when I say that about Ken, I mean I mean it only. I mean it in a, in the highest terms of the flattery because Ken Ken was like way up here, and I was like way down here as far as you know knowledge about the stuff. And uh, so when Ken would tell me stuff, it was like you know if I gleaned a little bit from it, I was really thrilled. You know, so much got a, it went over my head and around me and under me and whatever. <laughs> but. He, he was just so concise with everything, and he was always moving so fast. What did you sleep in, like four hours a night? Just, he was just always going and going and going, and uh, that's what. He says you are a very fast learner. <laughs> <laughs> sleep? What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know there are some nights where you, you know, you probably didn't get much of that. Oh. We, the thing is that you kept the doors open, and okay. you made sure, the, and you made sure the checks cashed, and uh, and uh, you did your best for uh, that you could in the circumstances, and we all are grateful for that. All right, starting up number three, part three of five of the playthrough. So we'll get that going here for you guys. So Astro Chicken, you said was created by who again? Doug Oldfield. Doug Oldfield. All right. Yeah, Doug had been to wrap up. He was he had been in the accounting department working on the uh, mini computer, uh, programming that for the accounting department, and uh, uh, then he wanted to get into the game games, and so uh, he was able to be transferred. And they gave him they, they said, okay, here's that the SCI manual, which was really not much of a manual. I mean, the AGI manual, and uh, and Doug just came up with all of that stuff on his own. I mean, I always knew Ken. Uh, I mean, Doug had a really great sense of humor, and he's a really soft-spoken man. But uh, when that, that Fun Seekers Guide to Eastern Madera County was just, <laughs> it had us all rolling. It's still it's still classic. So I just paused it. Uh, here is the secret coded message. So Ken was a good boss. Ken had very some very strong points. And just like any other boss and employee, there are always, there are always going to be times where you don't always feel like necessarily they were. But in retrospect... Uh, you have to look at the big picture, and I, you know, and I'm sarcastic about things, and I make fun of Sierra and stuff like that. But, you know, just, and I know it sounds like I'm just sucking up because this might possibly be the real Ken, and it sounds like it is. But, uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is, without Ken, we wouldn't be here doing this today, guys. So here's our here's our text here. Um, where there, I remember, I think it was Trolls who brought this up to me. You could actually play the game without decoding the message. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Then save save the two guys from Andromeda, but have no idea why you were even doing it. <laughs> that was that was kind of interesting. I guess you guys probably didn't have that exactly planned out, <laughs> but to be able to save uh, save yourselves, but still a neat mechanic. Either way. Yeah, we glossed over a few details. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing is that QA never picked up on this either, but, uh, um, I mean, trying to QA these games was definitely a, a bear, and I know there, we had some uh, beta testers as well out there, and uh, nobody picked up on it until we'd shipped uh, hundreds of thousands of these things and had a, another a couple hundred thousand pirated. It's okay, Ken. We're glad to have you here, man. Yeah, fine. absolutely. This is a real you're... treat. Thanks. Appreciate Def the fact that you're here. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, Ken, I've always wanted to ask you, because uh, I, I, I never got the backstory, but what brought you to Oakhurst to begin with? What, how, why did you guys move Sierra to Oakhurst? Or actually, Coors Cold. Yeah, Coors Cold more precisely. Video is paused for just a second, everybody. Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm more con I'm more con convinced now that we indeed are talking to the real Ken Williams people. Uh, guys, I cannot change the uh, save the chat logs. You guys asking in the chat room if somebody in the chat room wants to save the chat logs and then email them to Chris at guysfromandromeda.com. I would appreciate it. That would be very epic. 
because I myself yeah oh had issues issues <laughs> yeah we had the uh, that's right we had the uh, course gold address because oh couldn't handle our ma- mail as I recall so Ken you know it'd be great if you uh, would come to our rap party that will be in Oakhurst with absolutely our brewery. that'd be awesome it was overall it was bad for the kids oh man we're gonna have some brown bag beers in front of the talking bear it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, we're thinking about doing some hobo shots in front of the talking bear. <laughs> hobo shots. Wow. <laughs> that's that's too bad for the yeah, I guess I guess in a way the, the kids were kind of remote uh from uh I mean it was, it, there there were hey, some well, good we things about being out of LA. Turkey. Sorry, Scott. I'm cool with Turkey. I got a passport. Yeah. Party's going to Turkey. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> we're gonna be on our world tour. We're gonna we're gonna sail across the Atlantic with Ken and Roberta on on his uh, Nordhaven, right, Ken? <laughs> Always wanted to visit a Turkish Talk about prison. Talk people on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to visit a Turkish prison. <laughs> yeah, just wanted to check out a Turkish prison. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good times. <laughs> it's, it, they don't. They definitely don't leave you bored. Yeah, the concierge service is just wonderful. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start the video back up for you guys. Here we go. I saw. I watched a, a Midnight Express a couple weeks ago. I guess that was running through my head. Oh, God. <laughs> that makes part of me want to go up inside me. <laughs> uh Scott. <laughs> what? Uh, you're just hilarious, is all. I don't want people to cane my feet. That's what I was talking about. So here we are, Rogers, back in the aluminum mallard. I got to step away for a brief moment. Sure. I uh, just admit what it is. He's already hitting that uh, Sound Brewery IPA. Yeah. All this talk of our official brewery has made me thirsty. <laughs> That's right. Our official brewery, Sound Brewery, by the way, for those of you who haven't seen, won some uh, very prestigious awards at at, uh, at the, uh, I believe it's the third largest beer competition in the world. And so uh, we want to give a shout out to the Sound Brewery and, and Mark Hood and uh, and and Lex, his wife, and everybody for just a great job. They just pulled bottles off the shelf. They made nothing special, and they pulled in some very nice awards. And uh, I will be talking to I will be talking to Mark about some a special brew for somebody. Brew? Yes, a brew. We're talking beer again. All right. <laughs> so here we are. We are beer oh, in Turkish prisons. You got in trouble with Roberta? Oh man, that must have been rough. <laughs> Thank you, though, Ken. I mean, you. Uh, I, I was always. I always wondered. I guess because of my own insecurity about things, how how uh, how honest you were being with us about uh, how much you like Space Quest. But uh, I always wanted to believe it. And uh, I, after seeing you post that, I, I you you got me believing it. They were fun games. Leisure Suit Larry and Space Quest. And you'd spent so much time with Roberta when you guys were just starting the company, uh, when you were working out of your kitchen, as I recall, and uh, and uh, putting things in Ziploc bags, and uh, and then going out and taking them to the various hobby shops to to, to hang on the hooks and so on. That, those must have been exciting times, actually. I can imagine that was uh, pretty cool, seeing the demand for those games uh, grow. I just went, I had to read jump back and read Ken's comment. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he thanks was all, for that. That's yeah. It's quite a compliment. So video is paused here, guys. Um, hey, wait a minute. Back up. What color was Roger's hair there? Where? <laughs> now I always thought I always thought he kind of had. I always thought he was sort of a brunette, if you will, and. Uh, 
but I guess it uh, uh, and eventually when he went blonde, I was surprised, honestly. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the RGB value of his hair is there. Ken, Ken, you're not you're not ruining our broadcast. Actually, the uh, viewing number went up. No, when you came in here, by the way. P- people are glad to be even even if even if they just have just knowing that you're in the room makes them feel better. I don't know how much time you have. I know you're always a, a very busy person. Your post on Facebook, uh, or I'm sorry, um, the Kickstarter just the other day when you posted out there was a huge gain for us. So yeah, I was gonna just suggest, hey, go. Why don't you go hang out on our Kickstarter page? <laughs> In fact, we'll take the whole party over there. Let's we'll just uh, walk you through what to click. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're again. Our numbers actually did go up. We gained like twenty something listeners after people started tweeting this out on about about you in here. So it's not a uh, it's not a bad thing, honestly. I promise. So looking at the scene where I'm paused at, guys, um, Mark, these rocks that you made here in the, uh-huh. in the scene kind of reminds me of what you've got in the in the prototypes a little bit. Uh, it's kind of got the craters inside. Is that where do you I guess get the vision for this kind of thing? Uh, I've got a thing for rock textures. It's kind of weird, um, but I've always I really like the you know volcanic rocks with all the little you know the pits and holes and stuff in them on it. I don't know, I just got a thing for that. And um, if you've seen like meteorites when they come through the Earth atmosphere and they they, they have that same kind of a pitted look. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, I'll start it back up. Here we go. Are you guys heading down to Cabo, Ken? Or are you going on a cruise? Yeah, Ken. Just be sure to send us your the the uh, coordinates, and we'll uh, we'll beam right. in. <laughs> we're 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 helicopter in one one or the other. Cruising on yeah. a boat, to Turkey. We're, we're, buy, we're going to be buying a TARDIS with our space venture money. Nobody knows that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has all just been a big plot <laughs> to build a a replica of the TARDIS. Oh man, nice. If you guys if you guys uh, follow Ken. He uh, keep he keeps a a blog uh, or, or journal, whatever you want to call it, on his on the trips that they take uh, when they're when they're out on their cruises and so on. And uh, and he's a uh, he's, he's he posts quite frequently. And uh, I'm guessing he's probably I'm guessing you're going to be doing the same. So if you guys want to know what what Ken's up to uh, on this next four months, uh, definitely uh, check out his uh, his blog. Yeah, Ken. Uh, Ken has a book out too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he does. Oh, cool. Roberta's home. Everybody wave when she comes up. <laughs> Man, lucky us, huh? It, he, he, she may or may not come to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that not that she hates us or anything, but uh, I, I always had the impression that Robert was a little bit shy about the uh, about, about the attention that she got. We're still on Magmetheus, huh? Magmetheus. Magmetheus. Magma. <laughs> well, we're, um, as far as the deaths in uh, Space Venture, um, I don't think that you're going to see deaths that are less. Um, we have Mag- we've grown, old, we've grown older Ortega. and more evil. Magmetheus and Ortega are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a really descriptive death that hasn't been put into the prototype yet that Mark has made some really nice art for and, uh, oh, yeah. and, I, and hey, I, try, I try to do the art justice what's great about this podcast is we won't have to do Space Quest 4 because I keep confusing the two <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you could just reuse the audio it's not going to work one. Mark I don't think <laughs> and the fans I can take are gonna, a day off I don't think the fans are going to let you get away with that by the way I have a question I've paused the, um, the uh, yeah, video for just a second um 
I think Ken's struggling with Roberta. But they're probably catching up on news. But um, the purple ship here. When uh, someone was asking about that, um, like, what made you go with a purple hue for the for the aluminum mallard uh, here? Like the reds and stuff reflecting off. Was that the logic or what? Uh, yeah, Different it just atmosphere. Makes it feel like it was part of part of that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the atmosphere contents would uh, definitely change the light waves that are available. Mark did. Mark, uh, th that's the cool thing, and I don't think people get, uh, understand it enough. Is that uh, Mark and I would sit and we'd we'd think these things through, and then he would go away and make art, and he'd bring it back, and it was like so much more than I expected, and it it was so inspiring to me, and. Uh, you know, there's just no way that I would be as good at what I'd do if Mark wasn't as good as as great as he is. And uh, you know, I, you know, we just fed off of each other, and uh, I I hope people realize that one without the other, I just I, I just don't think uh, there's just no way. I just got so inspired by the great art. And, uh... Hey, thanks, Scott. I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, uh, I was just going to say um, that that ship picture. I just remember I, I was sitting here remembering uh, how I how I had to do that. I only wanted to draw that ship once, and I so I drew that ship, and then I had to uh, you know save that off, and then draw the the environments around each each version of it. So you know that each one's a separate image. I recall having that's the, how I. I had to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm babbling. I was just that's okay. No, people going, oh, like crap. How did I? Well, why did I like pick purple? Stuff. That's uh... people love the stuff. Mark Cocodine oh, says it's uh, good perspective art, and he's right. I mean, you always man, you have the eye for it. Just I, I was really spoiled, I, you know. And, and it was one of the things that in 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 the uh, infamous, you know, and us not doing games after Space Quest Four that I didn't really how spoiled I was. Uh, granted, the, the people that worked on, like Mike Hudgens and uh, the guys and and, uh, and and all the great artists that work on Space Quest 6 also did a wonderful job. I mean, just really great work. But uh, we didn't have the same relationship that Mark and I had. So it was, it was definitely different. Mark and I could communicate things without using as many words. Well, I like the art in Space Quest 6. I thought they did a great job with that. Uh, certainly, you know, the higher resolution... Graphics. Yeah, Mike Hudgens was the lead on that, and uh, and we and we and we had some really good other people that uh, I, I'm sorry I can't remember all the names. They're in the they're in the credits, and and uh, those people did really a really great job. And uh, you just look at that opening for Space What Six, and it's it's that's epic stuff. Starting up the video. Hi, Roberta. <laughs> hey, Roberta. How you doing? Long time no see. We're here. Oh, no. You guys are going to make her prove that she's Roberta now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> she already She just said she was. She's on Ken's account. <laughs> I know. Yep. I'm just joking. <laughs> Roberta was so good hey, to everybody. me on so many occasions. Say hi, Roberta. Once the... Oh, we're so glad you're here. I've got goosebumps. Literally, I swear to God. Remember when she we went... Was... Remember when we did the... Uh... Uh, the talk spot interview, and then we all went to dinner afterward, and you and I sat together and made fun of Ken. <laughs> Gee, I don't remember that. Don't, 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 don't tell, tell Ken that. I wasn't there. Oh, sorry, sore spot there. Uh. <laughs> Tension. <laughs> that, that, that was a fun evening, Robert. I enjoyed that, and it's a, it's a treasured memory. Thank you so much for, for showing up here. People are really excited. Yeah, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. Really miss you guys. Haven't seen haven't seen you guys since what was it the metro the metro in uh, Seattle when uh, we were there for dinner and you got you and Ken were there. Oh, thank you, Roberta. Oh, thank you. You are so sweet. And, uh, That's and, high uh, praise. Thank you. Yeah, and and uh, I've I've told the story to many people, but I don't know if you, you had a chance to see it, but. You gave me some really good advice, and when uh, when there was nobody else, I could really talk to you about certain things, and I will always, I will forever be grateful for it. There we go. There's 
Ken and Roberta and, and uh, is that that's Chris, isn't it? Or um, I'm sorry, ah. I get the kids' names confused. But uh, that's that's their son, and uh, he's he's not a small person. <laughs> he's not a small person. I mean, not a short person, I should say. But uh, yeah, if you guys check it, check this out. This there's a project that they worked on, and uh, it's a mul- massive multiplayer online game, if I'm not mistaken. It is Chris. Okay, good. I did remember. I the, I think that one of the last memories I have of Chris was uh, one time when we were all working in the computer room, and I and I and I think your other son was holding him by the ankles over the uh, <laughs> railing from the bar <laughs> near the uh, spiral staircase. <laughs> brothers will be brothers. Six two. Wow. I know because Roberta's Roberta's uh, is a petite thing, and uh, but uh, and obviously a very gorgeous one too. But. Uh, yeah, it, it, the, the fact that uh, I mean, look at him standing next to Ken there, and Ken's Ken's a tall man as well. <laughs> you remember that good? Yeah, I remember sitting there, mommy, mommy, <laughs> 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 and you weren't sure if it was one of the false alarms or if it was a real thing. <laughs> we were all so tired sitting in there. <laughs> oh, okay, no hitting on Ken on Robert. I'm sorry, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> That's not allowed. <laughs> Uh, we had some great, great times together, and like I said, uh, Roberta really helped me. And 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 when I was, I just had some really time, some times where I was really questioning myself, and and uh, and she just calmly told me a few things, some words of wisdom that nobody else in the building could have told me. And uh, oh, the picture just came up for me. So That's Chris a great is, picture. Chris yeah. Is now a, a a programmer and a darn good one. He has stayed in the software industry. That's great. Sorry, Mark, how is Sandy? Out loud for the people that'll be watching this video a little later. Hey, she's so doing can... great. She's at a tennis tournament right now. She still plays quite a bit of tennis. I got to see her a couple of weeks ago, and you wouldn't believe it. She, she is, uh, she's in great shape. She, she's, she's still the same Sandy, but with a little more authority because she's raised two children, as you, as I'm sure, I'm sure you can relate to. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she was, it was really great getting to see her. Yeah, so we got. A, we got I, I a, certainly will. I'll, I'll say hi for sure. We got a Con Roberta into coming to the uh, the rap party of the game eventually too. <laughs> up oh, yeah. her first, you know. <laughs> R- Roberta's a shy flower. <laughs> it's BYOB though. <laughs> <laughs> or BYOK. Bring your own Ken. <laughs> bring your own Ken. Oh, it's it, uh, I can't tell you how cool it is to have both of you guys here. And it's a uh, oh man, really it, yeah, it's a I really. Yeah, hear, hear what Chris has going. I haven't I haven't gotten the details. Yeah, do you want do you want to say something about Chris's uh, project? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Say hi to Johnny for me and uh, tell him I I lost his email and I'm trying to get back in touch with him. <laughs> I accidentally erased it. I had like. I had 2,000 pieces of mail, over 2,000 things in my inbox, and I was trying to find it. Not successful. Oh, sorry. Sorry to hear about that. Oh, Brand X, man. Well, I hope Chris is still going at it and not giving up. And definitely say hi to Johnny for us. He's been... He's been and he's been posting uh, for us, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we miss seeing him and he and Mary. You, you, UI Evolution is where Chris is working now. Okay. Stop for car readers and more. Well, he so he picked up he's picked up Dad's smarts on the programming front. That's great. It's good that those genes got passed along. Definitely. Well, thanks, Ken and Roberta. We appreciate yeah. you guys stopping yeah. by. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, great chatting with you guys. Hope we get to chat again um, offline. Uh, it'd be great to catch up with you. All yes, right. definitely. So you guys have a great lunch, a good, great time, and uh, take care and. Uh, and Safe enjoy travels. your uh, four-month uh, travel. Oh, and tell John, thank you for helping spread the word, by the way, um, as the the PR guy. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It's been helpful. Good old Johnny Magpie. Yeah, Johnny Magpie. 
bye Ken. <laughs> Say hi to your brother, please, and we'll uh, we'll be we'll be in touch. Thank you, and thank you for showing up. We couldn't be more happy. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll catch up later. That was now. That was a very rare and unexpected treat, guys. Uh, and uh, you guys were the only ones that have had a chance. Roberta has been. Uh, she's you know with all the things that she did and the way that Ken and Roberta saw uh, Sierra change, especially after they left. Uh, um, and, and and all the work that she did. I mean, really, without Roberta's work, Ken would have never started uh, Sierra. And we and uh, and so many games that you guys like. And not, well, we're not just talking about Space Quest, but so many things that you guys like and uh, and uh, wouldn't have been published, and the bar wouldn't have been raised, and other companies wouldn't have done the work they did if those two people hadn't pioneered the way they did. With with Absolutely. Ken's vision, with mm -hmm. Ken's vision on the market and programming and dealing with vector graphics to be able to store a lot of information on an Apple disk, and with Roberta's imagination that that she had her whole life on on fairy tales and and things like that. I mean, they it was just it was just this really wonderful piece of fate that helped to create Sierra. And I know that you guys think that I'm probably being very two faced because of the fun I make of the company and so on, but it's my sarcastic nature. And if you ask Ken and Roberta, um, I'm sure that they would agree. <laughs> and if you ask Ken uh, even further, you'd say he'd say that I was a major pain in the ass at times. But he doesn't bring that up as much as I do. <laughs> they were very they were very kind to us. Well, that was awesome. Uh, what a treat. Start say, say hi to Orb and Warburg. Very game. historic. Glad you could all be here to partake in that. That was the yeah. Anybody, anybody that can point out any place where Roberta has shown up and uh, done a public appearance, uh, even though this is a limited one, uh, good luck finding it. Um, th that's why we feel so incredibly honored because she would take the time to pop onto the keyboard. Ken probably may, Ken may have had to talk her into it, but uh, but <laughs> she came on and she was very gracious and. Uh, I anyway, know it, it. It really, uh, honestly, uh, having those two come on is really. Uh, I don't know. Just really warmed me up and uh, made me feel. I feel different than I did when we started this podcast. Yeah. Well, Scott, I don't know how you follow that up. Uh, follow that act up. That was pretty cool. I think. I think we're done here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, everybody, pop a beer and we'll talk later. No. <laughs> I doubt they'd let us off that easy, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, we can try. Here Thanks. is uh but here we go. We're we're wrapping towards the end of the game here. So you guys we'll all get a chance to say you got to talk you get to got to chat with Ken and Roberta. Yeah, it's really cool. Prost, Alexander, Prost. I didn't say much because I really didn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's definitely uh, it, yeah, for me it's a little bit easier than for Mark because we spent we spent so many uh I mean it, quote intimate hours because of uh, us working in their house late at night you know just plugging away on the black cauldron and uh and then various other projects uh, through the years but uh, uh you know I, mean, I gave get ken a lot of pro uh, uh props for just helping us get through getting space quest final because i remember there was a big push there at the end and he was <laughs> he was riding herd over us pretty pretty good to get us to finish that game up there in his office there at his house yeah, what a lot of people don't realize is that Ken actually had to put his house up uh, as collateral on the company. That nice house in the back of Space Quest Two, you know, the, in that picture, he actually had to put that house up to keep checks cashing and keep the company alive, and and to make it through to where uh, he could finally raise enough money that the company could thrive. And then look what he did. He managed to pull it out of what was basically, you know, a, of a company that was about to be flushed uh, by the economy. The uh, industry economy and 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 grew it into you know a, a, a huge company uh, with you know, with multiple uh, subsidiaries. It's hard for me not to go on about this stuff because I'm really touched by those guys showing up. So I hope you you guys understand. No man, I think we all are. I think that's great. It's uh, it's really cool. They stopped by. I hope you guys will save the chat room. And email it to me because um, I, I missed a lot of it because I was trying to coordinate everything here, but on my end. But uh, yeah, you guys out there want to email me the chat log? I would appreciate it, and uh, maybe we can post that out there for people viewing this uh, video later so they can kind of see what was uh, what was happening. 
or even if some of you want to pull out some of the messages going from Sierra people like uh, Ken Allen and the Ken Williams and, and the Roberta going back and forth, that'd be great. I would appreciate it. Okay, great. Uh, David says he's doing David 6858. Thank you. All right, we're going to start this bad boy back up. Are you guys ready? Yeah, All let's right, get up. Let's uh, move along. Let's we promised these people a, a commentary. Yep, so here we are. We are. We've landed. I love this planet. The sound blaster music. You guys are here. Okay, so uh, here's a quick question for you. Um, it says, what inspired the purple and green color scheme on this planet? Mark? Um, I'm sorry, I can't see what you're referring to. I'm still looking at the, the interior of the aluminum mallard. Okay, you might need to refresh your screen because you have the video. Yeah, the, the the scene now is he's standing behind some blue growth and he's looking at the entrance to okay. the uh, to the, the uh, underground area. Sure. He just put the of uh, scum soft. Uh, so and, what inspired the uh, what exactly? The, I guess uh, the color scheme. Yeah, basically. The color scheme. I would say what inspired the color scheme is that I was getting sick of looking at blue and uh, purple. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. That's... Again, I think it was just an attempt to try to, bear, to provide some variety and, and yeah. to go with something different. And I hadn't been using enough cyan, so... Oh, I missed an apostrophe. Uh-oh. Curse me. Drats! That was cool. I like that uh, that translucent Roger. Yeah. No. No. How the heck did we do that? Very memorable. I think you. I, I don't know. The only thing I think of is you must have you must have dithered at every other pixel. I, I, I can't remember exactly how the cells look plugged in. Uh, I think that's. What I might have been mistaken about the the dither fill. There, we might have had dither fill at this point, where where I could just fill in an area with a, a custom dither pattern I thought that was pretty innovative Scott where we were actually able to simulate a rotating circular hallway yeah definitely so This part is great. Uh, yeah, we we talked about this some in the uh, in the Google Plus Hangout the other night. So I want to make sure that I don't miss any uh, information that people want to hear about this. Well, I want to pause it here. Here's a question for you. Somebody wrote. Uh, this is uh, another question from Ismael, I believe. Uh, does it scare you that the question asker being Israel? Got got their first impression of office work from the cubicle farm with the paper trash cans. Basically, what he's saying is, growing up, I guess this is his first impression of an office, an office farm, and you guys gave it to him. How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, uh, we weren't intending to scare you, but if we did, that's really cool. <laughs> but uh, but honestly, it, it was just we were just trying to show a little bit of reality. Uh, well, you know, and, uh, maybe a. a an exaggerated reality of what uh, Sierra had sure. was here. It's like because the company was getting big again, and uh, so and we were in that loop and go that we call that metal building after we moved out of the uh, red building, and mm -hmm. uh, we, people were packed in. And the space was at a premium, as was privacy. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Should be started back up now, guys. Well, I think that was the fun thing for us is if there were things that that um, irked us or whatever, you know, that we could actually. It was very therapeutic for us to incorporate that into the game and 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 make fun make fun of it. Mm -hmm. I want to answer a question for Disco Slice. It was way back here. Um, he said he found Ken Roberta's original address in in Coors Gold, 
and uh, he checked it out. Uh, the original, uh, one of the interesting things was before I went to work at Sierra, I was a cook at. Oh, we lose you, Scott. I think we lost Scott, everybody. Mark, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I think we lost Scott. Yeah. Says so Scott's having some connection problems, guys. We won't move too much further, but we'll stay in the cubicle area at least. All right, now I'm going to pause it right <laughs> here because I know that Scott loves this scene. <laughs> so did you, um, Mark, did you feel odd when you were drawing Ken in there for this? And uh, <laughs> were you afraid you were going to get in trouble? No, I think Ken was pretty used to, at this point in time, being starring in our game and, and knew that he was going to be in there one way or another. Yeah. Um, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that part. I mean, he got a pretty good tickle out of that, I'm sure. Yeah, I remember Scott said a couple times about him him loving to show off this uh, particular, or some of those guys, him and uh, who was the other guy that was in this scene? Uh, that's Rick Cavan. Rick Cavan. Um, right. I'm actually amazed at looking back, looking at that now, how how well I captured his Accurate. likeness. <laughs> how well? Because <laughs> that's that's Rick. I remember, you know, like being younger playing this, I thought, "Oh, is that Al Low?" <laughs> I was like, "Well, I knew that you and Al had worked on Laser Suit Larry together, so I thought, well, maybe he threw something in there." He was the only guy I knew that, you know, kind of bigger guy with a beard or whatever. <laughs> sure. Well, we're having problems getting Scott back in here. But we'll keep trying. Yeah, Rick was a funny guy. He. Uh... No matter what time of year it was, that was his that was his outfit: shorts, sandals, and a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember Scott saying something about that. That was his typical attire, huh? Let's try again. However, he didn't walk around the office with a bullwhip. <laughs> he didn't, huh? No, that's great. Yeah, that would have been kind of crazy. <laughs> No doubt. While we're getting Scott, while we're getting uh, Mark, uh, I'm sorry, while we're getting Scott back on here, chat room, do you guys have questions for Mark uh, while we're paused for a second? If you do, let's go ahead and ask him. Oh. The other great thing oh, about the, the scum uh -huh. sauce levels uh, hello. was that uh, it allowed me? Roger yeah, to be what he was born to be, a janitor. So that's how he was able to get through this level. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we hear you now. Oh, okay, cool. I was I was doing a lot of cursing. Because <laughs> um, uh, if you guys have, if CenturyLink comes to your area, move. <laughs> uh, here's They're a question terrible. from the chat room. Um, how did you do the rotating corridor? Uh, the rotating corridor, that was interesting. Actually, uh, I, I have to admit that I didn't program that one. Uh, I started it, and then uh, Chris Smith, who, who, was, who was a new hire but was destined to become a systems programmer, uh, every systems programmer that came into the company had to work on a game first. Uh, that Mark Hood's initial thing, for instance, was uh, uh, Codeme Codename Iceman, was that what it was called? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he also did some work on some other things before he ended up managing the systems department as well as game, uh, the game production uh, and uh, so on. But anyway, Chris, Chris did that, and uh, Chris was a way better programmer than I was. And, uh, and I, w I was struggling with it a little bit. Chris came on, and we had to assign him to something, and I said, hey, take this. <laughs> so that's kind of how that worked. But as far as how we achieved that, um, the background art, there was you know plain, a plain circular background thing, and then the the doorways and everything were were sprites that I believe they were able to scale in code to make it look like they were getting smaller and going off into perspective. And uh, Warbird Games from the chat room asked Mark, "What are the tools? What art tools did you use? Was there paper involved?" Um. You know, on this game, very little paper because by this time I'd kind of gotten the, the 
the technique down and I was able to just especially stuff like like the scene with uh, the cubicles and stuff where it's just basically a lot of straight lines I was able to just do that on on the fly just on right on the computer screen <laughs> Ken snapping the bullwhip here um, we talked a little bit about this scene uh, Scott while you were out but I know this is one of your favorite your favorites yeah you to put a uh, Rick and Ken, Ken and, and Ken. This is one that Ken and Rick actually liked a lot. We thought, oh man, they're going to be all kind of unhappy <laughs> with us about this. And uh, the odd thing was that some, I'm not sure. I think I think Rick just snuck in one. You know, he just kind of like snuck in one day and was looking over somebody's shoulder and saw this, and he loved it. He <laughs> yeah, I think he was quite flattered by the fact that he was. Yeah, being an he appearance this in was a game. Yeah, he he thought this was a flattering thing, and uh, and uh, but uh, Ken. Ken uh, also liked it too, and uh, um, I, I it, and based on what you saw him uh, say just earlier, uh, and what we said, uh, I, I wasn't honestly sure that Ken always thought that. I, I always I used to think honestly that he was stroking us a bit on him saying that Space Quest was one of his favorites of all time from Sierra, but um, he took he took to this and he he took ribbing in good nature, and uh, I got to give him credit for that. He just out of there and uh, could have called me and shoot me out, but he didn't. Or called us and shoot us out, I should say. <laughs> Here's Ultimately, the first call me because I programmed it. Ah, uh, yes. One of my favorite scenes. I love the freaking Jello stuff, man. That was so brilliant. Yeah, people are asking about the Jello thing and uh, about it being a reward kind of thing. And, uh, we were having a lot of trouble dealing, uh, finding a deal that works out. Very expensive. You talking about like the crystalline Jello idea that I was yeah. talking about doing? Yeah. Um, that definitely. What I wanted to do was have you guys and like your characters encased in a crystalline Jello kind of. It looked like Jello, but it's obviously like crystal made. But I couldn't really find anywhere that we could do it at a halfway decent price to where we could make them in bulk. So. I'd, uh, if I can just like just finish up that story uh, that when I got cut off, um, I was working at uh, the Broken Bit, which was just down the road from uh, from where from the turn off to Ken's house on Mudge Ranch Road, off of Mudge Ranch Road, and uh, I was working there when they came home after a weekend and found out that their house had burned down. So the house that was on that site was actually built, if I'm not mistaken, by his brother Johnny. Uh, 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 there in Coarse Gold. Johnny had a house rebuilt there and a hot tub put in and so on. So it, it isn't actually their or, or original house. And they lost a lot of cool things. Um, Jobs and Wozniak had given Ken a, an app, one of the original apples on a piece of plywood, you know, with all the oh, wiring wow, just on yeah. the plywood and then just a, a, like a keyboard that they'd purchased at a hobby shop. And, and so Ken ha actually had an original one of that and it burned up, but, but they gave him another one that they had that they'd saved for themselves. Oh wow! That's how that's how deep Ken's roots go into the into the uh, into the community. Yeah. The, how much uh, he's thought of by uh, you know, how how much of a real, how good a relationship he has with guys like Bill Gates and so on. Ken had to calm calm Bill Gates down one time at the at the uh, convention where Space Quest Four was nominated because they had the thing where this guy was running a they had a guy that was really fast with math in his head and so they brought Bill Gates out. Bill Gates was given a, a calculator to see if he could beat the guy making these calculations in his head. <laughs> behind him, they put down uh, uh, they put down a Macintosh calculator on a screen behind him, and he didn't know it at first. And when he got back, that. he was, was pissed off. And Ken had to, Ken told me about how, Ken told, came back, when he came back uh, out from backstage, he told me about how upset Bill, uh, Bill was about it, and uh, he, you know, he had to talk to him for like 10 minutes to get him to mellow out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they definitely tried to make him look Foolish. Yeah, everybody in the place laughed, and, and and if Bill would have just rolled with it, it would have been fine. It was it was it was before Bill became really more, you know, before he became a really incredible philanthropist with his wife, and uh, and 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 if it, if it wasn't done now, I'm sure he would laugh. Back then, he was a lot more serious. Yeah, it was a big. There was a really big rivalry going on. It was before he and uh, Steve uh, mended fences. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry to break things up, but I just wanted to finish no, that that's, off. That's cool, interesting trivia, man. Oh, but anyway, they the thing is, what they they came in, they had to come into the broken bit where I was working, and I cooked them, I cooked their dinner, and uh, little and then uh, uh, within the next year, I was working for them. Very cool. 
So they I didn't had to video have pause for a second. Through. No kitchen. Just a smoldering pile of ruins. So this is the Rock'em Sock'em Robots kind of deal. Which, um, what did you guys name them in the game? I can't remember. Nukem Dukem. Nukem Dukem. That's so yep. brilliant, man. Yeah. And it was before Duke Nukem. Yeah, this is just such a clever thing to put in the game, man. Totally. It was a bear too, Mark's, uh, with uh, Mark having to work out the art and then having to work out the uh, the various cells, you know, the various uh, cells working together so that they because when in QA we had a lot of sharing going on where the or the uh, the top half would would separate from the bottom half. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was this was more uh, genius by Mark. Very cool. Turn the volume up a little bit. This is you guys arguing. Oh, is this the back of the ship? Yeah. Backseat driving or playing uh, <laughs> whiny children in the backseat? <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, I wanted this, to this... Go ahead, have man. Roger reach back and slap him, but yeah. his arm's not long enough. <laughs> yeah, Mark, yeah, you should have. Yeah, your, if your, your dad was a lot nicer to you than he should have been when you guys were traveling, Mark, from what you told me about your family trips. <laughs> well, there was never. It's not that there was never a threat. <laughs> yeah, you should have gone back there and bitch slapped these two little whiners. <laughs> Are we there yet? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Roger didn't get upset about too much, though, Simbaka. He was, you never really saw him stressing out. He was like, it's too lazy to get too stressed. <laughs> wow, I forgot how bad the audio was. <laughs> Sound Blaster. I'll have the, um, the MT32 music here in just a second for you. Yeah, we were spoiled because we had those on our desks and and. Uh, oh yeah. We we and we totally forgot what it was gonna be like for other people. There was, it, it was no looking enough. back after that. Yeah, exactly. And it was hard. It was hard enough for people to afford the games, much less you know, and a computer and a video card, much less an MP32. Watch Ken Allen for strategic tips. I'm sorry, Mr. Ken Allen. Gotta keep it. Keep the names right. Keep it straight. Is Ken out there? Hey, Ken. Yeah, he was just he was just suggesting uh, he was just telling them how to uh, win the uh, fight with uh, nu uh, Nukem Dukem robots. Man, oh man, you really showed those. <laughs> well, I bet this was a pretty polarizing um, sequence. People now we can get something to eat. Don't really care for. Uh, Arcade sequences in adventure games. Yeah. Yeah, some of those, those weren't too bad. The Astro Chicken one was kind of a pain, but you didn't even have to do that one if you didn't want to. Yeah, we, we learned our lesson about the arcade games from people that uh, they're, they're adventure game tourists. And uh, so we will have adventure game sequences, as I've, I've, I know I've said before, but I know there are always new people. But uh, we'll also give you an alternative that does not penalize you and that allows you to solve it in an adventure game style ma manner. <laughs> Let's go grab a bur burger! That was basically our mantra. If it wasn't <laughs> pizza and beer, it was burgers at the port. <laughs> oh, don't remind me. Aren't those good? My, oh, my sister man. just informed me that she was uh, heading, heading over there today to get a Oh, how burger. cruel. How oh, cruel.
Now that'd be an awesome place to have a uh, Sierra a Sierra reunion. Oh yeah, that would that would be a, like one of the uh, def- the high points. Of this is MT32, guys. Now we're talking. Yeah, this is a pretty cool ending song. I think the video is gonna end, and I'll have to start the next one before <laughs> before it gets there. Though it's crazy. Suddenly. Yeah, we'll have the death reel uh, chat room. We'll have the death reel here in just a second for you guys. It's coming. How's the music playing? But the video stopped. Corresponded with Bob recently, um, and he says he does get a lot of um, fan recognition from his contribution to this baseball game. Behind those trees is one of the best restaurants, literally in the world. I forget what it's. Uh, it was, Erna used to cook in a little place up in Fresno. I mean, not Fresno, on Fish Camp, uh, at first, and uh, and I mean, it was actually this motel that had cowhide, uh, you know, vinyl booths and stuff like that, and it was like seven ninety five for this five five course meal. I think it was one seating a night. And uh, so then she ended up uh, raising the cash and opened a restaurant up uh, back in those trees back there. And uh, she it, that restaurant is known worldwide. Here we go. We should be in. I can only go there twice. Should be going again here. This is MT32. Dermas, yes. The Blueberry Cafe. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Is that what it was originally called? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember what it was called up, up in... But my, uh, that... my wife at the time used to be a wait- waitress there at the yeah. Fish Camp. So, because it's uh, Erna's Elderberry House right Elderberry now. House, that's it. Elderberry House. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Ken, Ken did have a question mark on the end of it, so he looks... Oh, the audio is so goofed up right now. I can't even hear anything. Oh, the audio is messed up. Here, I'll turn the yeah, audio down. Yeah, I got echoing and yeah. music cutting in and out. And I think it's when we talk that we mess up the audio from the game. That's weird. No, we'll stop the audio. It's pretty much done anyway. Yes, definitely that is the way that the uh, red building looks. Very cool. Very accurate. And somebody brought up the fact, uh, Chris, you brought it up. If you go to Google Earth, there somebody had it's actually built a 3D model of that uh, building, and it's on the map. Yeah, uh, one of you guys from our Space Quest One um, uh, commentary emailed me the uh, all the different coordinates that I think you guys had snagged from uh, one of the forums. I can't remember SpaceQuest.net or which forum, but um, I appreciate that uh, for doing that. That's really cool. We'll post that out there, maybe on the website for everybody at some point. And then um, Mark actually pinpointed on Google Earth where the original headquarters was that I don't think anybody actually has the coordinates for. You sent that to yeah. me, so we'll add that as well. Yeah. yeah the I didn't yellow even building. check to see if that was on the coordinates list prior to that. But 
that it almost got condemned because it was built on a hillside and it started tipping over. So they actually had to come in and just dig all dirt out around it. It was like, what was it? It was like twice as wide on the top as it was on the bottom, the way that it was built on the hillside. They had to dig a big hole in there. In fact, and I remember one lady fell into it. It had to be early one morning when we were all coming to work. The guy who did that for me is uh, Chris Canavan. So, Chris, if you're out there listening, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Well, there it is the end of that, uh, of the actual I lo- playthrough. I like the credits. And now we will start the death sequences real quick here. I know everybody or loves, food mailers, loves them some but death Santa sequences. Society. So here we go. Death sequences are starting now. Yay. This is MT32. Whoever did this, this is good. Nothing like that. That's dying so crisp, with good I music. love that. When Mark had this dripping red stuff in there, uh. <laughs> Look at this one. It's great. Very Ways to die. Nice spawn. Guys, I'm gonna shut down and, and re log, reconnect, because I'm. Okay. Having all kinds of problems here. He's going hey, to have Scott, a What's this him... oven mitt? Like, I always wondered that in Sierra. This, this you mean the hat? hat looking king, king's hat, or what was that supposed to be? Are you talking about the uh, cursor? Yeah, I paused it. You see it? It's a it's, it's a cartoon hand. Cartoon hand. Okay, so it was yeah, meant it's to be got a... a thumb and three fingers, sort <laughs> of right. like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, that's what I had said at first. I thought it was a uh, like a. It looks like a. Yeah, it does look like an oven mitt. <laughs> Or All like right. the uh, or the uh, what, what's the was what it the hamburger helper guy or something like that? Yeah, there you go. The Orat burger help. All right, I'll start it back up. Here we go. A brave but fatal attempt at arterial art. Arterial art. <laughs> I love that stuff. One way to lower your blood pressure. <laughs> So would I know I'd be taking those things and by the handful right now. One of my favorite deaths right here. Not a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> You're ahead of us, Chris. Oh yeah, sorry. I forgot that I am a bit a few seconds ahead of everybody. Yeah. You're from the future. <laughs> That's right. Shredded like an Iran Contra document. Uh, that's relevant because I was sitting at home doing this, and the Iran Contra trial was going on 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 uh, CNN and uh, oh and really the, all those things. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was it was it was it was uh, relevant at the time. <laughs> yeah, it had to do with Ollie Smith or Ollie uh, Ollie North rather, and uh, and uh, Fawn, what's her face, his uh, secretary. Yeah, you can't get too many Ollie North references, Bassbert. That's what I always say. Yeah, he is on Fox News now, isn't it? It's amazing how time re- repurposes things. Fawn Hall, thank you, Dewey. <laughs> Nice little hole in Roger's head there. Yeah. Uh, and he's actually trying to focus on it. Let's see what happens. We got pretty graphic with those, didn't we? Yeah, you did. Those, uh, those... Oh, death God. close-ups. I like how Roger like does a backflip or something every time he slides off of these things. It's great. You probably haven't walked on much ice in your life, Chris. <laughs> the first place you land is on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Deep Shotter just uh, gave away that they are not maybe in this country necessarily or not from this country. 
favorite with a U. Where are you from? Come clean. Well, you know what? Uh, somebody was asking about if there was ever any death sequences we shied away from doing because they were too graphic or whatever. Like that one that was just up there. That was that was incredibly gruesome. Um, it's certainly not something we would do with in t with today's higher resolution graphics. It would just be too too much. Yeah, too much. All right, we got a we got someone from Australia. Uh, good old Oz deep shocker. Thanks for staying up with us. Or is it is it really early morning? Yeah, it must be getting really close to more uh, wake up time. That's kind of funny. Four twenty. Wow. Six a.m. there. Four twenty. Oh man, you guys are something. Yeah, a New Zealander. Hey, William. One of the things I love the most. Uh, Good morning. It's one of the best things about the games is we have so many people from so many parts of the country. I mean, the world. I'm sorry, and uh, it just seems like uh, as a group we have no geopolitical separation other than it's just a lot of miles. This one right here. Canadian. Is All right. I love knowing this stuff. Uh, that's why 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 I've asked in the past when you guys have emailed me to let me know where you're from because I I really love I, I love knowing uh, that stuff. I like how he bl blows through the wall. It's 3:22 but... p.m. Oh my God, we're in the same time zone, Chrono. Listen to that junk with a rolling man. Yeah. So cool. Oh, I like the uh, spread open rib cage thing there. That's that's kind of gruesome. Uh, we appreciate you guys supporting us and helping us keep this stuff alive. Oh, the snake. Yeah, you guys... Uh -huh. Snake chow. I remember I spent way, way too much time <laughs> on that snake. Really? <laughs> well, it, it wasn't easy either because uh, that was a huge piece of art to animate. I mean, I mean that was a yeah, really... I, I mean, that, that really took some CPU power from the system. By the system, I should say. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not that it was hard work for me. It was uh, Mark did the art, you know, did the work on making it look so nice. Uh, it was pretty taxing on the hardware, though, just moving that big giant sprite across the screen. Zot. Uh, Dewey, I wish I was in the same part of the country as you. When I went to visit Mark, I had to come back, and that was the hardest thing I've done, and probably the top five things I've ever hard, had to do. Hardest thing. Pod Chow. Syracuse. Don't mess hey, with Syracuse. Texas. <laughs> In the country of Texas. <laughs> I love this thing. Yeah, when are you guys gonna secede? I keep hearing about it, and I. <laughs> You've been a real hoot. Congratulations on your recent death. <laughs> oh, did I recycle Hoot? Damn. North Carolina. Shout out to North Carolina. I okay. This, uh... Also, I, I missed anybody else. We got Syracuse, Seattle. Yeah, I love Seattle too. I used to uh, when I was living there. I lived across in uh, Bremerton, across the Sound. Hey, light speeder, can you maybe box I... up some barbecue and send it our way? There you go. And uh, and uh, yeah, definitely so. And so uh, yeah. And uh, Dewey, if you could go, if you could go over to Polsbo or someplace in Seattle and pick up some uh, Sound Brewery beer and fire it our way, that would be nice too. So they're, they're, uh, that's where Sound, Bre Sound Brewery is located over on the uh, Kitsap Peninsula, uh, across the, the the Sound in in the, in the town of Polsbo. Just a short, just just a short ferry right away. I think that was the most annoying sound ever. <laughs> it was. It worked. <laughs> what else did I miss here? I'm trying to find more. Toronto. Hey, Toronto, Canada. USDA. Scotland. Really? 
I didn't realize that, Big Harry Marty. Oh, Your man, name isn't wasn't... Jenny. Your name isn't for really Je Jenny, is it? Big Harry Marty. That wasn't OSHA approved. <laughs> <laughs> Finland, we got Finland. Finland's in the house. Wisconsin. Out of my airlock, geek. Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's it for you, bozo. Denmark. Boy, Denmark is, and Denmark and uh, and Netherlands have been really wonderful countries. Uh, is, is, uh, is on the su support front, and uh, I love the Netherlands. I've been there. Beautiful place, wonderful people. I've been to Canada. Same thing. And I want I want to I want us to go on our European tour, and then just kind of like happen to go other places as well. Hey, All right, I'm anybody gonna... on here from Mexico? Strangely, we don't have a big Mexico following. All right, I'm going to start the next part up, guys. Yeah, a lot of Northern European fans. You're right, Chrono. Munich. All right. And uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure Brazil, if Alexander's maybe? still on here, but uh, Alexander's from, uh, he's, he's, my, he's a very, very good friend of mine, and uh, he's, he's from Germany. We have a base out on, on the metrics, I think, Chris, you said that we have a... Oh, Arizona. The, That's as good as Mexico. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Maine. Oh, Kanakistan. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we Good go, morning, guys. Iowa. Starting it up. Oh, I know. I think uh, that might be Ben. Two Guys World Tour. We want to have one and more, more than we can tell you. West Virginia. We definitely want to get back. I definitely want to. I want Mark to see uh, see the Netherlands and the art museums, especially. Uh, so many good places. Yeah, hey. I understand they have good coffee. The, they have some wonderful coffee, Mark. Um, yes, I can good speak to that. Coffee shops, anyway. I can speak to that. Prague, maybe. <laughs> hey, I, I went. I lived in. I, I lived in L.A. and I know that there are some parts of parts of things about LA that people hate but there are also some really cool things how many there aren't many, many places you can be at the beach one time and be up in the mountains in a few hours and near snow or be shot on the freeway for no apparent reason all right Alexander I will definitely be taking up that couch offer someday I, I mean I, if I don't I will die trying North Lancashire County no dope in Amsterdam anymore. Yeah. What All are you right. going to do? So we're starting the deaths back up. Here we go. You guys ready? Far away. All right. So we're going well, to... Space Quest 3. Here we're going to watch the death scenes. I making game. Allentown. The Van Gogh Museum is indeed worth the trip. That and the Rijksmuseum. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, Chris, I'm just waiting for something different to come up on my screen because it's um, so re slow. Try refreshing it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually seeing animation, which is unusual for my uh, uh, my internet connection. I just started it back up. Well, uh, yeah, Alexander, we've uh, Chris is running the, uh, the the death scenes. Trying to. Yeah, some people are having better luck than others, so. Uh, we, we don't know if it's a local issue uh, where you guys are or if it's something no it's just I'm pausing it and I, and I don't always have a chance to tell everybody because everybody's talking and I don't want to like jump in and just completely interrupt you guys but I'm pausing the video because oh, okay. so that we can actually talk about what's on the screen like, new improved quick tanning method these, uh, <laughs> yeah these funny these funny scenes because the majority of the people that watch the video are going to be watching it in the future, and they're not going to be able to actually watch, you know, know what everybody's saying in the chat room. So that's the, the logic. Did we get we get over a couple thousand people viewing this here in the next week? So hey, Mike, we want to make sure they actually know what's happening. All right, starting back up. So here we are, Roger. You is. died. <laughs> Whoops. 
<laughs> that may look like Raiders of the Lost Ark, but where I went to high school, there was a rubber plant, a tire plant across from a, a road from us, and a guy fell into the this vat of hot rubber, and that's how he came out. So where did you guys come up with the Jello idea at, anyway? That's Mark. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. It was just some weird idea. We thought, oh, but this to... would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Something funny about Jello. Yeah. Just like Mom used to make is a reference back to Black Cauldron, <laughs> and a message I put into oh, it yeah. that Disney accidentally <laughs> saw. The very first. Like in game mm, message it's you ever like, made. Uh, it's like fresh roasted mule shit, just like mom used to make. <laughs> the one that Disney saw. Yeah, Jello seemed relatively harmless. It was a clever idea. When Mark came up with that, it was, it was like, Dave, that's it, man. <laughs> that's awesome. I felt all tingly. I loved the way the Jello caressed me. <laughs> Yeah, you did kind of have a smile on your face. Your character did, you know, when he's he's stuck in that jello. He's the one hold like waving or something. Lots of falls. Nobody needs to hello. Oh, we man, do have a lot cheap. of Dutch cheese. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Deceleration trauma. <laughs> I was on my I was on my game with the death messages there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he was on your game. And I and I felt uh, reinvigorated with a couple of the new ones that you'll be seeing. Oh no. Yeah, the oh no it's kind of like I told you old, uh, Irish Mr. smile, Bob you had to go out and get food and look what you missed. Jello. You missed Ken and Roberta. And 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 did you bring enough for everybody? What's happening? <laughs> Again with the Jello, man. Love the Jello. These scum soft guys. <laughs> That's quite a sound effect. Oh crap, I don't even think I tried. Yeah, and I have the sudden urge to go fill up my bathtub with jello. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been so long. Do the backstroke? <laughs> okay, I confess I've got a, a thing for jello. <laughs> <laughs> Security. We have a truder in accounting. You got <laughs> jelloed. I like how the shadows on the ground. That's cool. Yeah, in accounting, it's pretty obvious when there's an intruder. Although <laughs> our, our accounting department we has some really nice uh, people in there. Maybe we can get, see if we can get Bill Cosby uh, in, in on our next meeting. <laughs> we'll do some jello pudding pops. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we would. Rob Paulson could do a really, a really good uh, Bill Cosby, actually. It'd have to be like a translucent pudding pop. He can pretty much do do um, do him spot on. That reminds me, in case I forget to say it, uh, guys in the chat room, listen to this live and whatever in the future. We, uh, I'll be interviewing Ellen McLean and uh, um, the voice of Glados, as well as another many other characters that. We'll be voicing uh, characters from the game Space Venture this next week, and I'll also be interviewing John Patrick Lowry as well. Uh, sometime in the middle of the week, probably on Wednesday and Thursday. So <laughs> that will be live. If you guys want to keep an eye out for that, I'll be announcing it here. This will be something fun. Yeah, actually, our accountants didn't look like those accountants. Uh, we'll try so to get Gary Owens, they, guys. Our programmers. Yeah, we need to get Gary for sure. We're working on it. We've got Gary for sure in the game, but you know, just pulling him for an interview is tough. Yeah, that's because this won't run on his on his Xerox machine. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, I was explaining to the guys and the and the um, the people, I should say, uh, in the uh, Google Plus hangout Hang that uh, Ari's not a technical person. Yeah, he he, he, he counts on guys at the uh, studios to take care of all that so stuff. I can and probably get him on the phone, but just delivers the golden goods. Yes, his schedule though is the problem. Working around his schedule. Yeah, we should all be so lucky. Bummer. I want Gary Owens to narrate my life. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, my everyday routine. It makes me think of Peter and his uh, and his uh, this, this having a score, having a sound score to his life <laughs> in uh, Family Guy. Actually, the Family Guy did a thing like that where they uh, were uh, Peter. I think Peter narrated everything he did for a couple weeks or something. Pager full of terabytes. That's it. I wish I had no bones. That was the final death. That was the final death and the ending of our commentary. Killed him M's, dead. You M's killed Zombo. him dead. I am killed a family guy uh, junkie. So. <laughs> Count on some Seth. <laughs> yeah, that's the annoying thing. The early ones were like, "Oh my god!" And they got some. They definitely uh, got a lot better as the years <laughs> went on. You, somebody wishes they had crabs. Uh, okay. Well, guys, that's we it. hope you uh, you guys out there enjoyed this commentary. We we uh, we went about 40 minutes longer than we expected, but we had oh, a special... Ken and Roberta had to show up. Oh, oh, God. God. Yeah, they screwed everything God. all up. <laughs> God. We had a pleasant surprise, yes, with uh, with Ken and Roberta showing up, and that was a lot of fun. and Definitely a really cool thing. Christopher Walken for narrator. That, that I gotta admit, that <laughs> sounds funny. I wonder how... I wonder if Rob can do Chris. Uh, he can't... He actually can. Rob Paulson can do a really good Christopher Walken. Oh, um, man. <laughs> a really good one, yeah. I was enjoying your your uh, ch your chat with him, and then you asking him to do stuff, and yeah. he's just so he's just so good natured, you know. It's like yeah. he just loves what he does. Yeah, he is a, a <laughs> one, Rob is a one of a kind man. He really he really is. Thank you, me all got for being in Cyber Wilk. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. We had a we've had an average of about 150 people in the chat room the, most of the show, so. You guys hung out for almost three hours, and uh, <laughs> oh, we salute you. Have we been here three hours? Uh, two and a half hours. Two hours and 40 minutes. Almost three hours. So, Wow. Um, we really appreciate it, guys. So um, I have no idea if the if Justin TV is going to come through this time and actually get the audio recorded properly, but if you guys could help me let everybody <laughs> know in our comments and everything that if the, the audio isn't in sync properly with it on Justin TV... If it doesn't show up, I will be posting a better version. Just give me time. I have one and two that will be going up here soon. So um, just just keep letting people know uh, that, hey, it's going to go up there. We promise. And, um, you know, we'd love to – any of you fans out there that want to take uh, these videos when they finally do go up and slice them into some smaller sections, maybe do like a highlights or something, um, some of the really – neat pieces of information that, that these guys threw out. You could do that. We'd love you for it. Um, Ruvanian needs a spatula removed himself from his chair. Hey, uh, Irish Smile, We I sent you a, a direct message on Twitter and, uh, about something that you made for us, and I was hoping you could check that out and give us some permission to post that. Yeah, I, I retweeted it out there this morning. Really cool. Um, yeah, he said he, the wife, the stupid beach with his wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> Really 
cool stuff. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, Prototype 3. Uh, we'll be going up here soon. Just give us a bit on that. Um, we'll have that up for you guys. And um, there should be some pleasant surprise with it. And there'll and, be, yeah, there'll be posts all over the place, so you won't miss it. And yeah, guys, uh, uh, one of you guys, I think David, said he's keeping all the text for me for the chat room. Um, email that to me, David, and yeah, I'll post that out for you guys. Um, Thanks, guys. I'll put that up, like, it'll, it, we'll put it up as a post on our website so that you guys can read the uh, the chat log and all that with, with Roberta and Ken. Yeah, Ken is under a Cabo Ken. Cabo That's Ken. why I thought it was a joke at first, because I didn't think Ken would do something like that. Yeah, it, well, the only thing it kind of cued me in was uh, Ben, who has done some work. Uh, uh, ben Lindelof, Lindelof, who is uh, one of our, uh, our developers, um, has done some stuff directly with Ken. And he hit me right up on Skype and said, that's actually Ken. <laughs> yeah, it, and at that point, Ben's I was like... On, Ben's Cocodyne, isn't he? I think he's Cocodyne on here. Um, oh, is he? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, Cocodyne. Yes, thank you, Cocodyne, who is also known as Ben. Uh, and thank you for giving me a heads up, Close man. enough. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a heads up. Because um, we obviously didn't want to embarrass Ken and us not believing it was him. <laughs> so... But we have had some imposters email us already. One of them was really funny, though. Uh, emailed us as Ken and was saying stuff like, "Ah, oh, man, what was Mark? You remember all the, the slang that he was throwing out um, in that email? I might have to find that email and post it out there. It I was hilarious, it though. He was like, "I'm Ken Williams, your boss, bitches," <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> it was yeah. just from, so, from so Russia very, or someplace yeah. like that. What's that? From. Uh, from Russia or someplace yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 it was. It was. Thank you, Cyber <laughs> Yeah, it was really funny. Anyway, guys, all right, thanks for hanging out with us. We got the Space Quest 3 come, uh, Space Quest 4 will be coming up. Also, uh, the Reddit um, thing, we're shooting for Tuesday. But we've got to confirm a few things. But we are shooting for Tuesday on Reddit for the, uh, the AMA. Um, so, anyway... Stay tuned for that, and uh, again, Space Quest 4 will be coming up. Uh, I'll announce exactly when. Obviously, I'd like to shoot for tomorrow, but we'll have to confirm a few things first and have that up and going for you guys. So again, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Mark and Scott, do you have anything left you want to say? Yeah, when we do the MA, I will be the one doing the incredibly horrible typing. <laughs> You'll know it. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. Yeah, See. thanks everybody. Really enjoyed this, and uh, thankful for you to take part. See you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs>